Welcome back to Solonaut Hex, everyone. <clears throat> today we're holding session number 397. And today's session is sponsored by our patrons and donors. Thank you very much, patrons and donors, for your generous pledges and donations. We wouldn't have dynamic lighting without you. Looks like Fenmar's running just a little bit late today. He'll probably join in <clears throat> as soon as we get onto the map. Uh... Um, but uh, when last we left the Order of the Superior Star, uh, they were at the Akuma Daimyo Estate. So rather than homestead, I chose to go along with your guys' suggestion of uh, estate. So I changed it in all the handouts and everything. Um, I think everyone was counting gold and riches, pretty much. Something wrong with this picture. All I see is light. Music just doesn't want to play it for me. I broke it. Right, I'm just going to refresh real quick. <laughs> <clears throat> I skipped through a couple of tracks when I started up the music. And for some reason that breaks the, uh, mu the music box. Jukebox, that is. Like music box, that's nice. <laughs> All right, uh, time now is 12.43 p.m. Um, let's see, you guys killed the held samurais and all that. Uh, should I remove slow? Yeah, so they're all, <clears throat> all the guys that were slow are Oh, wait, no, 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 there's some uh, <clears throat> children and women running around that are slowed, I think. I'm asleep, I think. Oh, yeah, or prone. I'll just leave those up, I guess. Let's see, Fenmar isn't here yet, so I'll just put him on the GM layer. So his character is unharmed. Uh, first up is Shandrak and Company's move. 
uh, uh, Erdrin will, uh, I forget which one uh, healed him, uh, Jim or Varen, but he'll turn to him and nod and thanks. And then he will uh, go into the room with everybody else. And uh, Erdrin and Shandrak will uh, count uh, gold. Okay. They count 200 gold in one round. And that is in addition to... The 1600 you had countered before? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, that was my count. Alright, uh, so that makes 1800. <clears throat> Alright, Asher and Company. Uh, Brian Druid is still, like, on the ground, like, kind of sniffling and on the pain. Water Bill's gonna come back toward the group. A jog. <clears throat> and then just to reiterate on the treasure, um, it's uh, like a metric fuck ton of gold. Um, yeah. There's a potion, uh, Nodachi, um, a medium suit of splint mail. Oh, uh, and, um, sorry, uh, on Musashi's armor, could you switch it back to splint mail? Because I realized that I was reading that chart wrong. Um, for armor, uh, let's see, gear and equipment, weapons and armor data. Yeah, this handout. Um, I just want to show you guys real quick. Down below the weapons table is the armor table. And then where it says full AC, um, way to the right on the on the full suits um, armor table, uh, the full AC is how many points below 10 the armor is. So it's not the actual AC of the armor. So... Banded male is not AC six. It's um six below ten. So uh it's AC four. Yeah. So brigandine would be four points below ten, which is AC six, which is not as good as uh splint male. Uh, splint male is near the bottom, it is six points below ten, so that's AC four. So one one uh spot worse than um uh, plate mail. And that's like the best Adria has to offer is six points below ten. Splint mail is a full suit of Oyori. Uh, Aaron will move closer to Brian Druid so that he can heal him momentarily. And Jim will move into the other room to help count treasure. So I have one, two, three, four, five people helping to count. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so there's a splint mail. There's a second potion. Um, nine bullets. A set of, um, Kote armored sleeves. Uh, which in Adria is a, the equivalent of a medium shield. Um, cause it's the most common, <laughs> most common shield. Um, and then there is a girdle. Um, so not a woman's girdle that is like a corset, okay? A girdle is a very thick belt, like a, um, championship wrestler's belt on WWF wrestling or whatever, WCW or whatever you watch. Um, those really, really thick, and I'm talking like two, like two, almost two feet, feet thick, uh, belts. Um, like, well, the, the band itself is about a foot thick, but the, uh, the part that goes over the stomach and, uh, 
groin almost um, is about two feet thick, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's usually kind of like almost like a piece of armor, like it's uh, made of really thick leather, and it might have a metal plate over it that's decorative, like. Um, a barbarian's girdle might have skulls on it. Um, a samurai girdle... Well, samurai didn't historically wear girdles. Um, other than, like, wrapping... They would wrap their uh, midsections with... Um, sometimes with um, uh, cloth. So if they got shot or, like, cut or something, it would keep their guts in. Uh, basically. And I think that was a common practice among y Yakuza as well. <clears throat> um, but, uh, yeah, so the girdle is kind of a western thing that has made it over here. Um, and then, uh, there is a ring, a book, and a rod. So, it's a bunch of treasure. All right. Um, anything else for Asher and company? No, does that bring the gold to... Oh, hi, Denmar. Hey, man. Bring the gold to 23. Uh, yeah, five people counted, right? Oh, and I forgot to, uh, give you guys your experience for, uh, showing up on time. So, um, Fenmar, you kind of lucked out. Uh, you get 397 points, uh, for showing up on time. I'm not on time, though. But I forgot to give it to everyone else, so uh, since you're here, I'm not going to be a dick and say no, not you. Uh, so we're at 2,500. We've all benefited from that from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so if you haven't already done so, go ahead and add 397 points to your PC, everybody. Um, or sorry... Not 2,500, 2,300. Five people counted. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Tenzi and company. Um, Musashi and Ashriel are participating in the count. Uh, we changed Musashi's armor. Okay. And, uh, Tenzi, yeah, let's see if I have any heals. No, I don't. I think I used all my heals last week. I'm just going to double check here. <clears throat> So he will go uh, um, towards the treasure uh, and look at the items, and he will pick up the book and take a look at it. Okay. <clears throat> Who picked up the book? Tenzi. Tenzi did. All right. Not you. Um, uh, this is this is Tenzi, right? Yep. Tenzi the monk picks up the book. Okay. Uh, Ah, okay. Um, could you roll for me a D8, please, Tenzi?
see, Akuma. Time, yo. Uh, state. Um, so yeah, it's a, uh, it's approximately, uh, it's three pounds. It's approximately, um, <clears throat> it's a library book, so it's bigger than a, um, a traveling spell book, uh, probably a foot and a half tall by, uh, one foot wide, something like that. Uh, probably about the size of a Vogue magazine. It's kind of a big periodical. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a Vogue magazine. They're, it's bigger than Time magazine and People and all that. <clears throat> um, and uh, what do you what do you want to do with it? Um, is there any writing on the cover? Uh, no. Nope, no, right. It's blank. Is it like clasped shut or anything? No. It's, yeah, it's just a regular, uh, library book. Then I will open to the first page. Okay. Uh, roll D100. Alright, uh, so you open it to page one, and it is blank. Do you want to turn the page? Yeah. Okay, uh, D100 roll, please. Uh, page two is also blank. Do you want to turn to page three? I would like to turn to page three. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, give me a percentile roll. Could be rolling to my death, but... <laughs> All right. Uh, so page... Fascinating. <laughs> page three <laughs> seems to... Uh, Go ahead and uh, give me a d6 roll, please. Okay. Uh, it seems to contain some kind of spell. Um, you can tell because you're a priest that
that it is a priest spell. Uh, mm, I'm going to say that uh, because you're a priest, you can also tell that it is uh, the Magical Vestment spell, which is a level 3 priest spell. Ooh. Do you wear armor? Do you wear armor, Tenzi? I cannot wear armor. That's a great spell for you. Uh, this spell enchants the caster's vestment, providing protection at least the equivalent of chainmail AC5. The vestment gains a plus one enchantment for each three levels of the priest uh, beyond fifth level to a maximum of AC1 at 17th level. Uh, the magic lasts for five rounds per level of the caster, or until the caster loses consciousness. If the vestment is worn with other armors, only the best AC, either the armor or the vestment, is used. Uh, this protection is not cumulative with any other AC protection, so not with your uh, cloak. Yeah. The material components are the vestment to be enchanted in the priest's holy symbol, which are not expended and... We don't use material components anyways. Um, and the casting level of the spell is not at your level. It is at the level of the magic item, which uh, books, I think, cast at level 7, but I'll have to check up on that. Okay, time now is 12.44. Oh, and uh, one second, Fenmar. Okay, so Fenmar and company. Uh, I'm going to grab the rod. Definitely. Um, okay, so... I would say that this rod is about... It's about three feet long. It's the length of a walking stick. Okay. <clears throat> um, and could be used as such, like a cane. Uh, the end of the rod has a large um, piece of, like, ornamental crystal that can be used as a pommel. <clears throat> and uh, the rest of the rod is a... Uh, beautifully, um, beautifully lacquered white, uh, wood, some kind of wood, but it's lacquered white and the, uh, end of it, uh, that would make contact with the ground, um, is shod in, uh, I want to say like silver. And um, if you were to uh, wield it as a weapon, it would count as a, um, I, I think that's like a horseman's mace, something like that. Um, but uh, because it's made of wood, it would be a little brittle. So if you rolled a 20, you might break it. Um, so just 
word to the wise. But in an emergency, it would it would uh, serve as a as a mace. Um, beautifully crafted, shot in silver, lacquered white with a clear crystal like knob almost. It's almost like one of those uh, crystal doorknobs you see on old houses with double doors. Uh, like one of those, pretty much. And it's uh, set into the, the, the top of the, the rod. Okay. Is it magical? Can I tell? Um, You don't have any magical detection spells cast so you can't at this time you couldn't couldn't tell um there are several <clears throat> at your disposal uh detect magic and uh that one orison that basically yeah, detects just... magic it, yeah, that would just tell me if there's anything magical in the area, though. Not even not. It wouldn't even tell me specifically if this item is magical. Yeah, it's very vague. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hang on, who's uh, around me? Um, everyone's around you. Uh. Oh. Uh. See, I reach out and and poke Shadrach with it. Hey, check this out. <laughs> Let's see if it does anything. <laughs> um, uh, no, it doesn't doesn't seem to have any apparent effect. <laughs> okay. Hey, careful, careful with stuff like that. <laughs> what what are, what do you think? Could be something. Could be nothing. Uh, hey, Ryer, why don't you take a look at this? Is he still, is he still hurt? He is still a little bit hurt, and he's also over here, so he's going to have to make his way on my turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where's he at? I'll step outside real quick then. And one, show him the staff, but two, lean over and do a um, cure light wounds on him. Uh, so um, even outside of combat, you're unable to cast spells when you move. Uh, okay, then I will get ready to. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and. Lo and behold, Fenmar again. Wee! <laughs> so you can cast your spell if you want. Four. All right. Can you see his green bar grow? Uh, Fenmark, yeah. can you see Ryer's yeah, green it, bar? Okay. It went up a little bit. Yeah. All right. Uh, and you gain the, what is that, 100 points for Cure Light Wounds. Uh, Shandrak and company. <clears throat> Ryer will uh, say, uh, uh, thanks for that, man. And then we'll uh, uh, say, yeah, so you said you wanted me to take a look at something? Yeah, check this out. And I hand him this. Alrighty. And bar, bar, uh, Legend lore? What would you like me to, yeah, like, what would you like me to name it on the legend lore? Um, uh, white lacquered rod. Uh, yeah. Oh, 
should actually be um, Rod from Akuma Daimyo Estate, but alright. Um, okay. So after four rounds, I will tell you the results. Uh, I was figuring that out, and that uh, Shandrak will uh, he'll reach into the chest, and uh, he just wants to pull out this uh, that girdle, and just kind of take a look at that for a minute. Um, <clears throat> okay, so it is uh, made of some sort of extremely thick leather, like, um, from some kind of pachyderm or, like, maybe a rhinoceros or something. Like, something really fucking burly, like a hippo, maybe a whale, you know, super thick skin, right? Um, almost like a uh, half-inch thick. And, um, it has a <clears throat> really burly three-pronged buckle, um, that buckles over the small of your back, outside of your armor. Okay, and, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, front covers basically, uh, the groin and the belly up to... Um, almost below the, the titties, uh, and, uh, or pectorals or whatever you want to call them. And, uh, it has a, uh, steel plate <coughs> on it that's carved, um, let's see. We'll say it looks like, a, a Sakura tree beautifully carved into, you know, like etched into this uh, metal plate on the front. And the, <clears throat> the metal plate seems to be uh, like highly polished steel of the type that's uh, used to make katana. Uh, it doesn't impart its own armor class, it's just decorative. So, and you can't, can't tell if it's magical or not. Yeah, but uh, Shandrak will lift that up and say, uh, "I'll take a look at this when you're after we're done, Ryer." And uh, then Shandrak and Ryer and Airdren will continue counting. Okay. Uh, Shandrak and Airdren, so that's twenty-seven hundred. Asher and company. I'll put Varen on top of Brian during my bed. Whoops. Alright. Aaron is going to cast a their moderate wounds on Brian Druid, which I will do momentarily. And uh, I'll have five people counting gold. And uh, Asher says, while she's counting, uh, maybe, she says, um, hey, let's make sure when the uh, spells wear off of these people, we interrogate uh, some of them. I don't know if they know anything about this. Uh, what was this society called? The uh, Arch Archaeological. I don't know if they know anything about this Archaeological Society, but it's worth a try. Maybe we should have left one of those samurai alive, and she kind of looks like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We should at least ask them that. And if they know, like, I don't know, when the Damio started acting okay. extra so it's, suspicious. If we take a rest, um, the, the Huen... I can handle that. Oh, divination? Speak of dead. Yeah. Uh, it's the Huen Tang Archaeological Complex. So it's an actual place. Okay. And, uh, actually Jim does say, like, uh, I've got a, we've got something that can help us too, uh, morning maybe. 
That is divination. There we go. Okay, so then Varen will cast moderate. I don't need a rest. I didn't fill my slot hey. from last time, so there we go. That's the wrong person. And with five people counting, I'm guessing that'll take us to... Okay, anything else for Azure and company? No, just verifying that'll be 3,200 gold with five people counting. Yep, 3,200. Uh, 10 and company. Ashriel and Musashi are counting. And 10 perhaps more curious than he should be, turns another page. <clears throat> Before you turn the page, you notice that going backwards to pages, what was it, one and two, is impossible. The pages will not go backwards. <gasps> so do you still want to continue turning the page? Yes. Okay. Uh, may I have a D100 roll, please? Book is very exciting. Okay, uh, page four is blank. Do you want to switch to page five? Yep. Okay, D100 roll, please. All right, uh... 1d6, please. And you can tell it is another priest spell. Level 4 this time. Uh, it is a free action spell. Oh, I'm gonna not turn any more pages. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay. And then yeah, uh, um, Musashi and Ashriel are counting, and that'll begin my turn. <clears throat> All right. Thirty-four hundred, 
and Fenmar and Company. Um, to uh, he's pretty good. Yeah, why not? I'll do another. Uh, another cure light. Might as well. Yeah, do another cure light. Six. Nice. And, uh, yeah, you see his green bar. Well, yeah, not that much. There you go. <laughs> and you see his green bar fill up, and he's brimming with life. He has no scars on his body. Uh, his, um, I guess, yeah. Your, your scars are completely gone. Any any residual wounds have uh, been healed. And uh, you gain 100 points. And uh, Legend Lore will be completed at the end of the round in three rounds. Shandrak and company. Shandrak and Airdren will continue their caps. Uh, okay. 3,600. <clears throat> um, let's have a real quick, uh, uh, like three minute break. Unexpected occurrences. We'll be right back in three. How's everybody doing? Pretty good. I have a bad feeling about that book. You have a bad feeling about it? Back. Huh? The 
book. It's a cool item. Maybe. <laughs> I got a bad feeling about it. <laughs> I haven't had much luck with books in my D and D experience. Is that on the table? How much I don't know about, like, <laughs> I don't go, like, reading through manuals or whatever, and there's so much I haven't come across. I think the last book I encountered that was magical but ended up being one of those books that turns on you and eats your face. Oh, God. And it, right, it, it snatched my hand. Oh, my God. I run an AD&D game, and, and uh, the last book my character's opened had explosive runes on and killed two of the party. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I encountered a horn of destruction one time. Uh-huh. Didn't know what it was. It was just this really bland-looking cracked horn. Huh? And it was on my door. If we ended up in a fight, I was just like, eh, I'm going to blow the horn. And <laughs> I, I almost killed uh, a party member but I ended up wiping out this like orc horde or something that was attacking us and I was like holy shit oh it's a friendly fire like a fireball or something it was uh and no, it was a, a destruction spell I don't I don't remember which one it was but it, it just God. <laughs> it was massive the one that uh Ashriel cast no this was a old game I was talking uh -oh. about items Oh, okay. I was telling uh, Tinsy, I was like, I don't, I don't trust this book. I've got a bad feeling about it. Oh. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, Shandrak and Company. Are we on Shandrak and Company? I don't know if he's back yet. Ah. Yeah, I haven't heard him. Okay. Uh, Asher and Company. Sorry, my bacon has grease on it. Mm. Alright, so five people still counting. And I'm back. Yeah, go ahead, Shandra. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, if it was my turn, then I'm just counting with Erdrin and Andrak and doing the legend lore. Okay, 3,800. Alright, uh, Asher and Company. So five people counting, and Varen will do a cure light wounds on Brian Druid. That'll be it. Okay, forty three hundred so far. That's forty three hundred gold. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, Tenzi and company. Astriel and Masashi will continue counting. Um, uh, Tenzi's gonna walk up to one of the slowed people. And try to use the spell from the book for the action that um, allow it to free them from the slow. The spell enables the creature touch to move and act normally for the duration of the spell, even under the influence of magic that impedes movement, such as web or slow spells or while underwater. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, do you cast it on the old lady here or the child yeah. next to her? The old lady first. Okay. Um... Give me a percentile roll, please. Okay. So you, you cast a uh, free action on the old lady. And um, 
uh, she's able to like move and talk. So she comes out of her. What is it? Does it cure sleep? Web or slow. No, I don't think it cures sleep. Yeah, I didn't see that she was sleeping. Sure. If you wanna, if you wanna switch targets, you can. Um, the one is okay. Um, yeah, I'll look for a slowed, non-sleeping person. So that's this kid over here. Uh, that's a sleeping person. You can see the little sleepy face with the Z's. Oh, oh this one here. That's a sleepy face. Sleepy face with Z's. Uh, this person. This person over here. Uh, that person is prone and blue dot is... Recitation. So she's, she's just prone. Okay, so there's nobody that's slowed and not sleeping. Oh, that's prayer. Um, yeah, most of the people that were slowed are dead now. It's just the old woman and the child in front of you that were slowed, but they're also asleep from a sleep spell. Um, well, I'll just do the casting and then I'll wake her up next time. I should have done it in the other order, but I didn't say that, so. Okay. So you, um, you cast free action on her, and instead of snoring slowly, she snores at normal speed. Okay, so you can see that it's working. Also, magically, in your hands, the book uh, flips its own page. Okay, so I need another uh, D100 roll, please. Okay, it's another priest spell, so please give me a d6 roll. Okay, so it's a level 3 spell this time. Six. This is page six, correct? This is page six. Uh, it is water breathing. You can tell because you're a priest. If it was, if it was a wizard spell... Um, you wouldn't be able to tell what it was, but you would still be able to cast it. Uh, until you, someone had read it for you or something. Read magic is all it would take. Uh, let's see. Where is the handout? There we go. Yeah, so page... Six priest spell level three water breathing. Okay. And I think you're pretty much getting the gist of this book. Uh, so... Yeah, I don't know if 2E is the same as 1E, but in 1E, um, a book is, a, is basically the same as a scroll, so the level is one level higher than what you need to cast the spell. That sounds about right. Uh, let's see.
There it is. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> well, that's kind of a chunky bonus. I'm not going to give it to you yet. I, I want you to have it identified before I give you this bonus. It's pretty big. So, um... Anything else for Tenzi and company? Um, yeah, Musashi and Astro were counting. Unless you already got that in there. Yep, 4,500. Okay, that's it for us. All right. Uh, Fenmar and company. Is the war done yet? No, it still has uh, two rounds left at the end of this round. Uh, does he ha does Ryer have it then? Can I move and go count? Yeah, he has the rod in his hands. I'll move. I'll look, move. taking a real close look at the inside, see if there's any writing. <laughs> I'll move back in and, and help count. Okay, uh, 4,600. So counting is a house rule of mine. It it takes, I mean, I can count about 100 coins in a minute. You know, I thought that was a pretty decent. There's no rules for counting treasure, you know. Uh, so I just made one up, about 100 coins per person per round. Uh, seems kind of logical to me. Okay, Shandrak and company. Two rounds left on that legend lore. Alright, Ryer's working on that. And Erdron and Shandrak cannon. 4,800. 4,800. Asher and company. Uh, Aaron will join them back in the room to help count. And Brian Druid is kind of sulking because he's still in a lot of pain but he's going to go and help too and so that's seven people counting alright 5500 he's still in pain still symbol pain. of pain still affecting him yeah what is that um summoning Well, that the daimyo did. The no, yeah. I know. I what like what? It, it's a sum. It's a summoning spell. Yeah. And there's two different versions of it. There's a priest version and a wizard version. It's not a curse. No, but it has a duration. Okay. And the. Uh, um, caster dispelled it almost immediately after he cast it. So you can, as a free action, a caster can dispel their own spells at will as a free action. Uh, was that it for Asher and Company? Yeah, that's all seven characters, right? Okay, uh, Tenzi and Company. He's gonna put the book in. Or he's gonna close the oh, book. I know what I'm gonna put do. Put it into his book backpack. Okay. And then try to wake up the sleeping woman. That he, uh, she wakes up. Okay. Um, um, the book weighs uh, three pounds, and it's called um, "Book from uh, Akiyuma Daimyo Estate okay. Treasure." I will add it to my sheet. Okay. And uh, she wakes up and looks around and she says, Oh, where am I? Oh, this is the estate. There was so much bloodshed. Oh, they are all dead. Sadly, yes. Um, the 
soul of your of the daimyo has been freed. But alas, he is dead as well. Oh, my husband. He is in a better place. I believe that the evil, the thing that um, caused his condition was taken to the archaeological complex. Do you know where that is? Oh, great. More issues with my voice changer. Yes, I know where it is. Would you be able to give me directions to go there so we can find that evil and destroy it? Yes, yes I, I can. can. and then Musashi and Ashriel are helping count. Uh, when, when she, she stands, stands up, up she, she bows, bows to you. you. And I will return it to her. Okay, end of round. Mic check. Good. Okay. Benmar and company. Um. Are the people that have the red circle, is that the pain still? Uh. Red dot is... Yeah, symbol of pain. Who's this right next to me? That's Arizona. I'll reach over and touch his shoulder and use Orison Alleviate. Um, because it's magical pain, he has to make a saving throw at a negative two penalty. Save versus spell, right? Yeah. Although he's got prayer and recitation, so that should be a net plus one. One. Yeah. Minus one. The spell. Plus one. One. Oh, plus one. Hmm. <clears throat> Erdrin seems to be uh, in pain still. Racking pains shoot through his body. Uh, okay, Legend Lore time. will be ready next round. Shandrak and company. <coughs> Just uh, counting with two people. 
5,000 now? 5,700. Oh, there we go. 5,700. Uh, Asher & Company. That's seven people counting. Okay, 6,400 and climbing. They wouldn't mess anything up if we're... Whenever we identify something, if it's one of the things that were gifted to us, can we give a, like a shout out to whoever did it? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I still have that recorded too. All right, uh, Tenzi and company. Uh, two people counting: Ashrael and Usashi. Um, and Tenzi will um, wake the little girl while he gets the directions to the archaeological complex from the lady. Okay, 6,600. <laughs> and she says to you, she says... You must be careful. You must travel through the woods, the Fey woods. They are hunted. You must travel southwest towards the mountains into the woods and then southward along the mountains. Once you reach the low mountains there. You will see Huan Tang Archaeological Complex. About, do you know about how many days journey that is? It will be many days. I thank her, um, wake up the child, and then that'll be it for us. So, in a nutshell, Southwest into Fay Woods. Towards the mountains. Then southward along the mountains. Until Then at the planet is Wen Tang Archaeological Complex. Whoops. Mic check. Good. Yeah. All right. And the little girl wakes up. All 
right? Fenmar. Uh, I will take a five foot step and touch Drek on the shoulder and do the same thing I did last time. Real quick, because I could use this clarification on Orisons as well, but let me see if I'm remembering correctly. After you've cast the Orison, then you can move and still use it because the spell has already been cast. Am I correct about that? Um, it depends. If it has a duration, mm -hmm. then then yes. After the round in which you cast the spell, if the spell keeps functioning, and you actually have to like do something with it, it then becomes an innate spell-like ability. <clears throat> and you would roll initiative as an innate spell-like ability after the round in which you cast it. Gotcha. Cool. So, for example, um, the Flaming Spear spell, mm -hmm. uh, you can um, cast it in a spot and then immediately move it 30 feet, so it, like, travels 30 feet and burns people as it goes right and then um ever after that during its duration because it burns for two rounds per level ever after that if you want to move it you would roll innate spell like ability to concentrate to take control of the flaming sphere and to move it another 30 feet because you have already cast the spell. It is just an innate spell-like ability after that. All right. Um, all right, Shandrax, uh, racking pains are alleviated. Yay. So he can now remove his uh, red dot. I don't even have to move. I've got a 30 foot range for these, so. Yeah. And. Uh, Just shakes his sh shoulders and says, thanks, man. No problem. Alright, so the legend lore is ready. And Ryer can tell. Oh. Mm, okay. Uh Ryer can tell that um it was made in uh Where is my... There we go. Uh, it was made in Hang Mai, the old capital. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was made in Hang Mai, uh, the old capital, where um, Ushas's uh, uh, court is. Okay. And um, he knows that its general effects are that uh, the wielder of the rod can cast uh, the resurrection spell. What and, the fuck? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this could definitely bring someone back. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. 
So it's the marking right here that says that. Yeah. It's uh, rods. Rods cast spells as if they were twelfth level. And uh, so their spells tend to be more more powerful than wands, you know, for obvious reasons. Wands cast spells at sixth level. Uh, staves are ninth level, and rods, being shorter than staves, for some reason, cast at twelfth level. So, uh, but yeah, the general general function of this rod is to resurrect people. General effects. Okay, anything else for Shandrak and company? So, uh, yeah, I guess after that, uh, Ryer will uh, uh, come on up and say, uh, so, you, uh, so you want this, uh, Fenmar? Uh, yeah, what's, uh, what'd you find out? Well, not sure... Well, it looks like, uh, not sure how it works exactly, but basically, uh, you can bring people back to life with it. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's a really, really good find. That's, that's the power of the gods. Somebody made it. <laughs> you can also tell where it was made. It was... It's an Adrian rod. So what? It's for, it's an Adrian rod. It's the continent we're on. Okay. More specifically, you know that it was made in uh, Hang Mai. That's where Uthis is from. Who's a, a, a an avatar? Who actually will resurrected her avatar, and uh, she's the. Uh, power of the sun or the morning dawn Asher looks up from her counting and says uh she brought Karen Glor back and Karen, Karen Glor looks up and says she did <laughs> and Asher says I don't go in much for the gods but it's alright in my books <laughs> and it kind of pipes up like yeah after we brought her back of course she'd bring someone else back for us So, yeah, uh, Ryer, Ryer will hand over the rod if you'd like it. Yes, most definitely. And uh, Erdren and Chandrak will keep counting. Okay. Uh, Penmar, uh, could you give me a d10 roll, please? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, anything else for Shandrak and company? Just uh, adding a 200 more to the count. Okay. 
Okay, that means we're at 6,800. And counting. Lots of gold here. Okay, Asher and company. <clears throat> seven people counting. All right, that brings us up to 7,500 and counting. Tinsy and company. <clears throat> I'll look around to see if there's anyone else that's sleeping. So I'll walk over this way. <clears throat> I don't see anybody. So then I'll go to um, assist in accounting. <clears throat> Along with Ash Rilla Musashi. Okay. And shout out to Chicken Alfredo 77 for uh, watching us. Shout out. Hey, Chicken Alfredo. Is that is that your friend? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> How's it going, Chicken Alfredo? I also want to shout out to uh, Watch Your Pants, uh, Thacko Tuesday. Um, and I think Sophia Fox is also watching. And I want to shout out to uh, uh, people who are... Uh, hosting us, that's uh, Lila Tuff, Lurks, Lizzie Beth, Have This, Commander Root, uh, Chicken Alfredo, or sorry, no, not Chicken Alfredo, uh, Anna Banana 10, uh, Alien Gathering, Alien Conglomeration, Alexis the Nexus, and Oax 2. Thank you for hosting. And thank you very much for watching, everyone. Thanks, guys. It's good to have you. Yep. Chicken Alfredo, you got great taste in friends. Yeah. Uh, cool all right, so that was uh, 7,500 and then uh, three more counting, 7,800. Okay. And it is uh, 1249 p.m. Fenmar and Company. Um, I am going to cast Alleviate on Brindra. Alright, so Save versus Spell a plus one. On Erdrin, you said? Brian Druid. Er oh, Brian Druid, okay. Gotcha. Oh. Oh. Thank you for trying! Yeah. Oh. I start so bad! <laughs> Mic, mic check. Kind of touches you on mic your check. shoulder with a snout. Hello, hello, mic check. Great. I scratch under his chin.
Mic check one two. Hey, gray hey. dogs with the kind of like check, old check, man check, kind of face. <clears throat> oh, get back. Mic check. No, I'm gonna go make coffee. You guys there? Hello. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, can you still hear the me? The other dog, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, Brian Jarrett says... Um, oh, it still hurts so much. <sighs> Did you hear my voice changer? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry that took so long. I had to... Uh, Delete and reinstall um, Clownfish. All right. Uh, anything else from Shandrak? Uh, I think I, I think it's my turn now. I think Fenmore just went. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah. So Shandrak uh, picks up that girdle and kind of waves it in the air and says, "Hey, Ryer, check this out next." Mm -hmm. and, uh, Shandrak will walk over, give it to Ryer, and then he'll walk back over to help the count. Okay. And Ryer will identify the girdle. Take a look. Not, look. It's not identification. Not identify. Yeah. Not identify. It's legend lore. It's the legendary nature. So call it uh, Girdle from Akiyuma Estate. Ten rounds. Oh, lordy. State formerly known as Akiyama. <laughs> oh, I forgot, Fanmar's got plans. <laughs> and uh, Shadrach and Erdrin will uh, count. Okay. I assume just... the women and kids are not evil, correct? Uh, you don't know. Is our angel buddy reacting to them? Uh, you don't know. Okay. Uh, is that it for Shandrak and company? Uh, yep, Ryra's taking a look and I'm counting with my other two guys. Asher and company. Seven people counting. All right. <clears throat> 8,700 gold and counting. Good lord. Tenzi and company. Uh, three people counting. All right. 9,000 gold and you've reached the end of the pile. Nine thousand gold. Okay. Hot diggity dog. Imagine what you could do with nine thousand gold. <clears throat> could buy a couple of safe houses. Donate it to Ushas. <laughs> 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 you could upgrade to no you couldn't upgrade to a galleon uh, that's way more expensive 
scallions are spendy. You could almost buy a second... I think... A second caravel. Aren't they, um... Like 10,000 yeah, or something? They're 10. 10, yeah. Teneroth got us a discount on this one. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, anything else for Tenzi and company? Nope. That was it, right? Okay. Um, oh, jeez, these are positive now. So I'll just, your strength of stone has gone away a long time ago, uh, Fenmar. So okay. you can reduce your strength back to normal and remove your strong arm icon. And it is, oh, and recitation is gone as well. <clears throat> uh, Fenmar and company. I think recitation was the blue dot. Count Counting stone, right? Yeah. Yeah, the counting is all done. Um, if a spell was, was successful, but the fail was sa failed, can I try it again or no? Um, Astral has yeah. a symbol on as well. He hasn't tried it yet. Oh, Astral. I will cast the Levy on him. Yeah, for as many... <clears throat> um... As many Orison slots as you have. I can keep attempting. Yeah. Alleviate. And then once you run out of Orison slots, let me know. And I'll grant you uh, 100 points. And the save is at minus two. Yes. Still in effect, so that would be that would negate that, right? So. Um, it was like a, with uh, recitation is still on, right? Recitation's done, so with prayer, it should be a minus one. Uh, prayer is done as well, it was done six minutes ago. Never mind. <laughs> you on your own. <laughs> yeah, the hold spell. Slow is gone. Uh, grapple. That was... That was a hold person and that guy's dead. Very nice. <clears throat> okay, um, Shandrak and company. Nine minutes left until that legend lore is done. Um, Ashrael thanks you for the pain alleviation. You are most welcome. Oh yeah, and remember everyone, um, <clears throat> making statements and stuff is a free action. It can be done during any phase, even, um... Uh, during initiative phase. Same thing as um, changing facing. But be careful with changing facing because if you ever turn your back to the enemy, it incurs uh, uh, attack of opportunity. Even during initiative phase. Uh, so Shandrak will uh, he'll pick up that uh, pouch of nine bullets and he'll uh, kind of Oh, well, I'll walk over here, and uh, he'll talk to, say to Ashrael, uh, do you think you can uh, detect magic on these, maybe, to see if there's anything uh, special about these? If you can place them on the ground in a corner somewhere, and I will do that when I have the chance. Okay. And I will I'll put the bullets right there in, in the ground.
There we go. Ammo pouch. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else for Shandrak and company? No, I don't think so. All right, Asher and company. Asher starts dividing the gold into little piles and directing her followers to, uh, like, take piles of it and stack it before each PC. So in the end, each PC has 2,250 gold stacked in front of them. I'll be good for this time. And just remember your henchmen require uh, an equal share, a share in equal size of your own. So you basically, you got to divide it equally among you and your henchmen. And uh, your, um, if you have a follower with you, uh, they followers um typically have a uh like a monthly pay cuz they're supposed to be like actually that would be zeroth level followers i think a follower that has a level would probably be want to be uh treated similarly to a henchman yeah so they they probably want a cut equal to yours as well uh, but zeroth level followers usually have a uh, uh, monthly pay according to their uh, occupation. So footmen are usually like a GP per month or whatever, and you pay all their living expenses, but they net one gold per month. <clears throat> Um, anything else for Asher and company? That's good. Okay, Tenzi and company. Asher will move over towards the ammo pouch and cast detect magic. At will. Okay. Um. And <clears throat> emanating from in front of you. Uh, you feel dim magic um, go ahead and give me a percentile roll actually I'm just gonna give it to you it's it's enchantment magic so priest version is uh, I think it's for a priest that would be like general um, Universal? No. All. All magic. The all uh, sphere. Okay. Uh, anything else from Tenzi and company? Um, Tenzi will take the pile and divide it up into three and hand it out to a, a pile each to Musashi and Ashriel and keep the third for himself. That will be it for us. Okay. Um, Brinder is still affected by symbol of pain, right? right? Okay. Time now is twelve fifty-one p.m. Next up is Fenmar. I will. Try to alleviate Brian Druid's pain again. Okay. Universal spell at minus two. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Und yeah, he he sighs and his uh his shoulders he like kind of almost collapses to the floor in relief. He says, "You are a good priest. I thank you, friend." I nod. Um, Tenzi, did you ever uh dispel your blade barrier? Yes. Okay. As soon as uh, the fiend was destroyed, I dispelled it. Okay. All right. Uh, legend lore on the girdle will be completed in eight more rounds. He's kind of uh, collating data right now, <laughs> mentally. Uh, Shandrak and company. So Shandrak will say, "Is like, oh, so what? What does it look like, Ashrail? Uh, any magic on him?" <laughs> there's a there's a dim enchantment or a dim universal type of magic. Lovely, I like the sound of that. So, uh, Shandra will pick up the bullets and say, uh, so, uh, since we have luckily nine bullets, uh, how about, uh, uh, Cotter Bell, how about what, sound good if I give you three, and then three goes to Eredrin and three to Ryer? Anglor says, uh, well, that's it just right with me, partner. Appreciate your business. So, uh, Shandra will first... Uh, walk over to uh, Cotterbill, and he'll give him uh, three other bullets. And that's pretty much all you need to know about ammunition, you know. Um, so they're they're bullets plus one, kind of obviously because of the dim enchantment. And uh, if I can, I'll also just distribute it to Erdogan and Ryer my this turn as well. Yeah. Uh, so three went to three different characters, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so three to Erdogan. Three X to Cotter, Bill, and... 3x to uh, who kept the other three? Ryer. Ryer. Okay. Alright. Anything else for Shandrak and company? Uh... Uh... Shandrak will go over he can, and he'll pull the ring out of the chest. And you can definitely find the ring. Yeah. The, and he'll put it on the ground uh, over here. N no, over here. South of him. Can you take a look at this? Next Asherah, please. Yes, I shall. Uh, where? Which square? I'm sorry. Uh, just south of Sandra, Chandra. Okay. Asher and company. Uh, so I 
Fisher looks at the chest and he's gonna get a potion. The first one or the second one? First one. And oh, it says, uh, I'll hold this until you get a chance to look at the ring that Shandrak put out. That's, that's it. Uh, Tenzi and Company. Astro will turn to the ring and do detect magic on it. Hmm. Uh, so you're facing this way? Yeah, he's going to look down at the ring. Yeah, you definitely feel um, overwhelming magic coming from the east. Alright. 12.52 p.m. Fenmar. Um, we'll try to alleviate one more time on uh, uh, this gentleman next to me. Erga? Yes. His name. Seven more Name rounds. of Coralon, I revoke <laughs> your pain. <laughs> 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 uh, close, but <sighs> bruh, <sighs> it still hurts, bruh. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Shandrak and company. Jazz hands aren't working. <laughs> <laughs> Try the happy feet, bruh. Try happy feet. Uh, Shandrak and company. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Uh, Shandrak will go over and, um, he'll, uh, he'll move out of the way for Asher to move in, and then, uh, Shandrak will pick up the second potion. Okay. And uh, Erdrin will uh, go over here, and uh, <laughs> he's going to hide in shadows. <laughs> Asher grabbed the first potion, right? Cool. Yeah, I'm doing the second potion. All right. Uh, somebody's hiding in shadows. Erdrin. All 
All right, Asher and company. All right, so there is... There's nothing... Oh. There's nothing in this square, correct? Correct. There's Ready? just there's okay. a ring on the floor in between you and that square. All right, so Asher's going to take the potion that she has, walk this way, the potion down here on this square, and then she'll back away. And uh, Oh, the first potion? Okay. Be it. Now, let me double check on Anatar. I'm pretty sure. Anatar says, uh, do we identify all these objects, mate? I can identify them tonight. Have to do that, uh, ritual thing. We'll cleanse them. We'll drink some, you know, the way we identify things. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, I think, I think we still had, um, a couple of potions that we still need to identify, didn't we? Oh, yes. I see more things to identify here. I'm not prepared for that, but I can do the whole, the identify oh, yes. situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds good, old buddy. My turn. Okay, it's Enzi and company. Um, Ashriel will turn towards the potion and detect magic in that direction. Okay. <clears throat> um, it is like moderate elemental fire magic. Twelve fifty three, Fenmar and Company. Um uh, I don't know. Um I'm feeling kind of froggy. Uh, I walk over to the ring and I put it on my finger. Oh, okay. Um Let's see. <laughs> Ram comes flying out of the finger and hits Musashi through the wall. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> like all magic rings, it is a gold band. Uh, you can't tell if it's magic, though, and when you put it on, um, you don't feel any apparent effects. And no one sees it affect you in any way. Um, yeah. I could tell you it provides you with some kind of feeling, but that would just give away what kind of ring it is anyways, but uh Hit me No, nah, it's, uh, it doesn't have any apparent effect on you um, Although, uh I will say, I will say um, that the ring changes size to fit your ring finger perfectly when you put it on So, in that regard, you can tell it's probably magical without, you know, having to detect magic on it. 
Uh, uh, not what I was expecting. I'll take it back off. And what do, you, what do you do you with it? Asher, says, are you, are, Asher pulls out a dagger and says, are you sure? I'll get you. What? Asher makes like a stabbing <laughs> motion towards you. Do you drop it back on the floor or what? Yeah, I'll set it back down just so they can... Same place or... Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll step out of the way. All right. Six more rounds to uh, Legend Lore, the Girdle, Shandrak and Company. Uh, Shandrak will walk over and he'll set the uh, second potion down to uh, the south of him. Next to the other one. Oh, right here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for Shandrak and company? Uh, Erdrin will move silently uh, a couple steps. So, uh, as a view of the courtyard. And uh, that will be all. Asher and oh, Company. Yeah, I'm trying to go ask. I'll do this, do this one next too, please. Uh, Asher is at the chest and uh, asks Karen Glora, is that a uh, EP thingy? And Karen Glora kind of rolls his eyes, but he picks up the Mio's Wakazashi. And Asher is going to over here and pick up that potion she laid down. She is going to hold on to it for the time being. Karen Glor is going to go where that potion was and put the wakasashi. And then step back. Gee, that's kind of long for a wakizashi. Oh well. No. <laughs> the giant's wakizashi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, Tenzi and company. Asher will turn in the direction of the potion and detect magic. Okay. Uh, go ahead and cast, go ahead and roll the template so that you can see how it works. Uh, you sense overwhelming magic coming from that direction. Overwhelming enchantment. Mm. And then, uh, Shandrak, you go ahead and roll the template as well so you can see how it works. Because this is, like, the second time you've kind of <laughs> faux pod. Sorry, I, I've actually done, th I haven't ever, I haven't used, um... Detect, detect magic? magic? actually. Yeah. Uh, ironically. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you basically send out a probe beam of detection that's 10 feet wide and it goes until it hits something so if there are other people standing in front of you you're detecting the magic of the items on them as well <laughs> okay Whoops. and it goes out to a maximum of 60 feet and uh, I say again it is 10 feet wide so, mm. if Ashriel is looking at that pink potion, he's basically sensing 
the Wakizashi, the Ring, uh, Shandrak himself, Jim, and Anatar. All the way to that wall. And it says it, uh, a stone wall of one foot or more thickness, solid metal of one inch thickness, or a yard or more of solid wood blocks the spell. So it's going through the wall, too. Because these, these walls are like, they're made of rice paper and balsa wood. So they're super thin. And detect magic will go right through them. <coughs> uh... Okay, time now is 12.54 p.m. Fenmar and Company. Uh, I will... That... That armor I got? Yeah. The Brigandine armor? Set it down. Oh! Also, uh... Here. Yeah, change that back to split mail it's split mail yeah it's split mail is that still four yeah it's ac4 <laughs> i'll put it in the square here yeah for for some reason i thought that they switched uh split mail and brigandine around but they didn't at all they're the same as they've always been it's just i read the table wrong because the table doesn't tell you what the AC of the armor is. It tells you how many points below 10 the armor takes you. So Splint Mail isn't AC 6. It's 6 below 10. So 10 minus 6 is 4. And Brigandine is an AC 4. It's 4 below 10. So AC 6. And it's pretty sure Brigandine has always been 6. <coughs> and Splint Mail has always been 4. Like, back to maybe even first edition. I think that sounds right. Yeah. I do think they, they might have changed uh, hide, though. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll set that down. I'll ask Ezreal if he can... It's kind of it's out of line now. Um, I'll put it here. If he can... Okay. If, if it's magical. Let's take a five minute break. And for viewers, we have a three minute commercial break. And then two minutes after that, we'll come back. I just don't want you to have to look at just a bunch of animated tokens for three minutes. Uh, so we'll be right back in five.
I'm back. I'm here. And I'm back. Is Fenmar here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so next up is Fenmar and Company. Uh, oh, I put that armor down mm. here. That's right. Ask Azrael if he can detect magic. I also want to ask about the people here. Um, Azrael if they were all evil. So in, he's in the middle of the spell now, so he can't really... Can't talk. I would assume he couldn't talk. Although I guess I could end the, each round, I could do a new one, because I can do it at will. Um, once you have cast the, well, f for him it's an eight anyways, but, uh, once you have cast a spell, um, it's in effect whether you, uh, talk or not, so, it just it takes concentration to, um, you know, detect the magic, but I suppose as long as it's not a pertinent question that you're asking then that's fine. Like, you can answer questions while you're detecting magic. Um, so I don't know that he actually hasn't checked on the people to see if they're evil or not, so he wouldn't know yet. Well, didn't, it, didn't he, like, respond to evil? Like, we slaughtered everybody here, I assume, for a reason. Well, well he, saw, he saw the daimyo was evil. And that's what started it. After that, it was just... And I don't know about the innocent bystanders, if they were innocent or not. There we go. I guess... Uh, which square do you put the armor down in? South of Asriel? Okay. Yeah. Alright. I'll step back. And you asked your question... You're actually standing on Brian Druid. Oh. He's, uh, right, the size of a horse. I'm not that kind of priest! I can't tell which square he is. <laughs> He's in two squares. He's in that square as well. Yeah. Stay here. He's a, big, he's a big boy. He's the size of a horse. <clears throat> Gold dragons are born that way. All right, uh, legend and lore of the girdle will be completed in five rounds. Shadrach and company. Um, so where does Ashrel seem to be putting his attention on? Which item? In the last round, it was this way. Um, so Still doing that? He's going to turn to go here. And I should actually say there, not but he, he has been, as you... Put him down, he's going in order, so you can assume he's going to turn this way next. You can also uh, change your facing at any time, and um, if anyone asks me the facing of a token, I'll tell them. So is he going to face straight north? Um, uh, actually, he's he hasn't changed. He's going to still be on the angle, which I fucking grabbed it with the tail. I point him that way. He's still facing towards this way. Uh, so the the little square that you grab, that's your facing. 
So he's facing southwest. I thought that was my tail. Nope. That's your face. It's always been your face. In in this game, at least. All right, I I corrected it. Okay. So he's currently facing diagonally northeast. That way. <clears throat> Shandrak. Shandrak, are you there? Do we lose Shandrak? He's on there. Weird. He can move. He says he can he can hear us. Uh just click on disconnect and then uh re reconnect to the voice chat. Should fix Oh wait. Uh he was saying earlier he has bare wires on his microphone, right? That's it, I guess. There's a whole lot of typing going on, but no entering. All right, uh, Asher and company. Okay, so Asher kind of sees this log jam of, uh, of items and uh, she kind of moves toward Ashriel and says uh, I can move any of them if you uh, need a path cleared let's see um, yeah, he'll be able to do the wakizashi next but after he does that if someone can just move that and put one item into that square and I can always do detect on that square or that direction he nods and says we'll do it and then sorry if my phone disconnects with the internet for a second oh weird okay and Jack's back it's on either for my turn okay uh Shandrak and company Shandrak will say, uh, oh, so, uh, uh, would you be able to, t what'd you tell from this bottle? Oh, too much, too much magic in the area. You're in the way. All uh, right. Let me fix that. Uh, Shandrak will walk over. <laughs> and Mark off. <Hoskins>. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you you missed it. So, um, Ashriel told. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Well, if Ryer can, while he's just um, still doing his um, identify, I guess he'll like do a half move away. 
while doing his little, I mean, not identify his yeah. legend lore. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Yeah, bards can, uh, they can do a half move while doing most of their stuff. <clears throat> I think, uh, it, it actually, uh, specifically says when they're doing their, like, uh, what's it called? Um, counter song that they can they can make a half move and I think also uh, rally allies maybe they can do a half move so I don't I don't see why not <clears throat> they should be able to do a half move while doing all those things except for spell translation obviously because you have to be at a desk yeah. or whatever <laughs> for sure and uh uh, Erdrin will take a few, uh, steps moving silently. He's uh, still racked with pain, right? He is. <laughs> okay. Checks, checks, checks. And he only moved four squares, right? Shandrak. Yep, he did. Okay. Um, Asher and company? Did my turn ahead of Shandrak. Oh, that's right. Uh, Tanzanian Company. So I shall take a five foot step turn this way and detect magic. All right. <clears throat> uh, you sense overwhelming magic coming from the west. Anything else from Tenzi and company? No, that's the Wakizashi. Tenzi will go pick up the Wakizashi and move it to or put it back by the treasure chest. Okay. And then that'll be the end of our turn. Uh, time now is 12.55 p.m. Fenmar and company. So just so you know, the Wakizashi didn't come from the chest. I mean, I don't know if that is what you were implying. It, it was uh, on the daimyo when he died. Just put it back oh yeah, I forgot about that. Is she awake? Yeah, they're all awake. Um, I'll take this sleep symbol off. Is that her kid? Uh, You can't tell which children she has given birth to but um, she is very old she looks like she's in her 70s and these children look like they're younger than 10 years old uh, I'll walk up to her and ask her are any of these men in here worthy of a second chance These samurai. And she looks at you and she blinks her eyes until tears stream down her face and she says, Unfortunately, no. You have put them out of their misery. 
and they are now in a better place, hopefully. Thank you for uh, dispatching them with honor. No problem. It was our duty to do so. Uh, I would like, if you can, you, maybe not you particularly, but send word yes. uh, to the farmers in the area that they are free of their, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, their, uh, uh subjugation yes ah uh, excuse me are you uh, telling me to leave my home uh, i have yeah, lived this, at this ain't your home estate. anymore i have lived at akiyuma estate all my life okay not anymore i cannot leave here why can't you this is my home Not anymore. Then end my life. I will die with honor, just as my husband did. That's not honor for me. I can't do that. You're more, I'll tell you what, you're more than welcome to stay, but this ain't your home no more. This will always be my home. Then I, I will live as, as your mule. So be it then. And she walks away in like a fuss. To the master bedroom, no less. That's fine. This was, I, I'm going to make a proclamation. This, because of the uh, Daimyo's deeds, this is no longer his estate. He's this dead. Will be, yeah, he's I know, dead. He's, he's gone. Um, this is now a, a community area. A safe haven for anybody in this area. Anything else from Fenmore and Company? Uh, no, that's it. Uh, the girdle will take four more rounds to Legend Lore and Shanrak and Company. Uh, Erdrin takes a few more steps but into the courtyard. Open silently as he can. And, uh, yeah, Shandrak's just, uh, just waiting for Ryer and Ashrael to do their thing. Okay. Uh, Asher and company. So, like she told uh, Lindsay she would, she picks up the potion that she's standing on. She moves it to this square. And she steps back. And she was, uh, she was close enough to hear Fenmar. She was within 90 feet. Yeah. So she, she's gonna move down and Plus, say, uh... Plus, the old lady yelled, too. Oh, okay. Then so I will live as down. your mule! <clears throat> with Anna! <laughs> moves down and says, uh... Sounds pretty tense. Yes, the, uh... The way I see the world, the, the misgivings of this estate's former master... They seed any any claim. 
Maybe there's some middle ground to be had. Maybe you could give her a job running the estate for what you're trying to do. That might work out. I am not a uh, tyrant. Shrugs and says, uh, I'll leave it to you to settle then. And she goes back into the room. That'll be it. Uh, Tenzi and company. Asher will do the same thing. Five foot step to here. Face in this direction. And detect magic. Okay. Um, overwhelming charm magic. Yeah, overwhelming. Step back. Let Asher know what he detected. Ooh, sounds exciting. on the ring Musashi's the going pink to potion okay uh, Musashi's going to just uh, he's going to just step up and admire the wakizashi he's not going to pick it up or anything just going to look at it it is beautiful though it's not part of a matched set um, it is highly highly ornate with ancient symbols predating <clears throat> the Stuff that's on his own wakizashi. It would make uh, a fine collector's piece and a worthy weapon for honorable battle. Tenzi will go pick up the potion and drop it off next to uh, Asher. And Asher will... Hold on to it like she is the other. Okay. Oh, okay, you have both potions now. Asher? Yes. She does. Okay. Uh, anything else from Tinsy and company? Nope. Okay. Time now is 12.56 p.m. Fenmar and company. Um, they're doing that I'm going to start dragging bodies from here so inside I'm going to take them out outside okay <clears throat> um, as you drag off this one particular guy you just drag you dr drag it past this little girl right here and um, tears start streaming down her face <clears throat> and she kicks this guy's dead body I just give her a nod they won't harm you anymore little one And uh, <clears throat> she nods and walks over to this uh, young woman over here. She looks like she's in her 20s. She's the one that's uh, holding this little boy right here. So she looks like this. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, she kind of bears a resemblance both to the old woman who you argued with earlier 
and to the daimyo that you guys slew. I'll look at her and who are you to this place? <clears throat> or should I say were you to this place? Uh, she bows to you and she says I am Akiyama Haneko I am the Is daughter right? of the daimyo There is no more daimyo. You heard my proclamation. And you heard my mother. We will not leave. You can ask slay you. us if you wish. I won't ask you to leave, but my words have, have meaning. They mean nothing to us. Just continue dragging the body outside for now. I'll deal with this later. It's funny, now my voice changer is working perfectly. Alright. Now that I, <clears throat> you know, deleted it and re downloaded it. Okay, three more rounds for Legend Lore, Shadrach and Company. Uh, Chandrak will turn to Tenzi and say, So, um, this, uh, this daimyo, I mean, not the daimyo, the, the shogun, he, uh, he said that, now, I, I forget if it was the same reason or for a different reason, but he, want, he wanted to eliminate there's bandits, but he also wanted to eliminate, um, your karate school. Was, was, did he consider your karate school bandits? Because I mean, Ming Dao seems pretty far from a bandit tribe. That's that's a proper city. Um, he nearly wiped out the school of karate, but my school is not of that discipline. Oh, you're you're not a karate school. Nope. What about these bandit tribes? Do you know anything about them? They're barbarian tribes, not banded barbarian tribes. Barbarian tribes, yeah. Barbarian. They're like, imagine uh, the Mongolians. Same, same type of culture. Barbarian tribes, would you say that they're, uh, they could be trustworthy or no? Um, I don't know that Tenzi would have the experience with them to know one way or the other. Um, I'm just thinking because, um, <laughs> well, uh, well, we'll have to leave pretty soon, and, uh, uh, you know, if Fenmar wants to, uh, 
out of this place, you know, maybe we could, you know, I don't know, offer it up to one of the barbarian tribes as a, a gift for Ming Dao. Better relations, if they're good enough people. Um, yeah, I don't think, I think Fenmar should not evict these people as their traditional home, and while the daimyo did evil here, that does not fall upon them. I'm sure um, in time he will be given the uh, holdings and power that he earns from Crone. And Drag just nods, and that'll be all for my turn. Okay. Asher and company. Asher is going to step forward and move this ring to this square on the same pattern that she and Ashriel agreed to, and she will step back. Okay. Up again. All right. Uh, Kenzie and company. Here, face in this direction and do detect magic. Uh, <clears throat> facing west, left? Correct. Okay. Uh, you sense. <clears throat> I want to say. Uh, man. Uh,. Faint elemental fire. Uh, sphere, yeah. Faint elemental fire sphere. Okay, he will take a five foot step back, um, relate to Asher what he detected. So everyone that's here can hear it, but uh, ring of fire protection. Ken's not going to do anything right now. Um, so for Musashi, would because he, he has the match set, would he wield uh, the Wakazashi even though it's not part of his match set? Yes. Yeah. There's no uh, requirement to wield match sets. It would just be a, a mismatched. But the um, the markings are so beautiful. It's it's it would be considered an honor to wield it anyways, even. Even by breaking up <clears throat> a match set. Um, then Musashi will turn to Kenzi and say that he would very much like to um, take this Wakazashi. And Kenzi will turn to um, Asher and F Shandrak and Fenmar and ask if that's okay with them. Asher shrugs. Yeah, we have no use for it. Seems meant for him. Yeah. People, I mean. <laughs> you will look an extra stylish with a sword like that. Musashi yeah, Musashi, model it for us. And she points to, like, us because some scars on the ground. <laughs> like a runway. So he picks it up and starts doing like different swart sword movements with having the Wakazashi and Katana, getting the feel of them, kind of dancing around almost as he moves. Sure claps. And that'll be it for us. Okay. Uh, 12.57 p.m., Fenmar and company. Uh, I'll keep... Pulling these bodies. Okay. Outside. And this little girl's gonna quickly 
run by you over to the woman and what appear to be now her brother and sister so two little girls and a little boy uh, it looks like the boy is the youngest and uh, the two little girls look very learned <laughs> not because of their glasses they're, they're not wearing glasses really but notionally very learned that would be the grandkids of yeah yeah so <clears throat> uh you probably you know slew their father he was probably one of the samurai and this woman who appears to be in her 20s probably is actually in her 30s um and these kids she probably had you know uh along the lines in her in her 20 somewhere along the line in her, in her 20s to late 20s and early 30s Um, anything else for Fenmar and company? Uh, no. Alright. Two more rounds for Legend Lore of this girdle. Next up is Shandrak and company. Shandrak will look over to Tenzi again and say, Oh, so what exactly is your school for martial arts? Uh, Technically, it's called the New School. Because it's not any known martial art. He kind of made it up himself. With the help of Master or. Uh, Xi'an Chi, yeah. Ah. So Xi'an Chi is a Kung Fu Grandmaster, and he kind of recognized. Uh, Tenzi's like originality and helped him develop his own style of martial arts which until now has been called the new school just the new it's new school it's not old school it's new school nice that's why you're called high master And uh, that'll be all for me. Okay. Um, Asher and company. Asher motions to Anatar and says, uh, um, let's get that ring so that you can identify later. It's like, and uh, says, I'll get this ring! <laughs> and he goes over and picks up the ring. And then steps back to where he was. And... Sure, we'll bring uh, the Nogati sword from the chest and place it oh. in that square and step back where the ring was. And at this time, Anatar is holding the ring. All right. So, as you set it down, uh, you notice the Nodachi is so freaking long. It takes up not one, but two squares. Asher almost cuts a couple people as she goes through. Like, oh, sorry! <laughs> ah! I'm unwieldy. Uh, so it's like um, it's like seven feet long. I think. That's how long a nodachi is supposed to be? Chia asks um, Ranglor, uh, if he'll get those. Uh, she doesn't know the name for it, but she describes the kote off of the Mio's body. 
nods and heads back that direction. Starts I stripping I that. that. I would have had that and set it with the armor. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind then. Have to come back then. That'll be it. Well, actually, um. Since Asher's on. She heads over here and she speaks to this woman and says, uh, says, I'm told the archaeological society is a long complex. journey from here. Complex. Com the archaeological complex is a long journey from here. Um, how far is the Shogun stronghold from here? Uh, yeah, she kind of taps on her lips with her fingers. Maybe a couple of thousand miles. Ooh. I don't know. Asher, no. Asher nods and thanks her. And she heads back in here and says, uh, Sounds like no matter which way we go, it's going to be a long journey. Shouldn't... We'll finish our business, of course, but I wouldn't want to linger more than perhaps just tonight. I'm. I think that any time we lose is more opportunity for our enemies to an elite on us. I keep wondering what might have happened if we'd just gotten here a day or so earlier. Okay. Uh, Tenzi and Company. Sensing the Nodachi. Yep. All right. Uh. Moderate enchantment. Uh, moderate all. Sorry, moderate all sphere. I think enchantment. Yeah, for in this case, it'd be moderate all. Yeah, you can call it um, uh, Akiyuma's Wakizashi. Yeah, she uh, she looks at you and she says, um, "These uh, samurai are not the, the only, only warriors. warriors. There are uh, other, other. Mm, soldiers, soldiers in the lands surrounding the estate. They are mostly farmers, but they are our reserves. And we will be fine." Yes, they are our people. Okay. And that'll be it for us then. And uh, hopefully, when little Sugichi grows up, he will be a better man then both he's a father and he's a grandfather. Tenzi will 
follow in her direction and say, for God's willing, it will be so. Time now, 12.58 p.m. Fenmar. So you've just heard uh, this this conversation, this nonsense about a little uh, Sugichi growing up and being a greater daimyo than his uh, father and grandfather. Who's going to teach him? I will teach my son to read. His, his examples here were not very, you know, very good examples. Hopefully, with my strict discipline, he will grow up to be a good man. Daimyo is your father? That he was. Your, your mother is a good woman? She is. Detect deception? If she's telling the truth? Uh... Do you have that spell? Detect lie? No, it's not. A, no, like a just, uh, just a check. Intelligence or something? Uh, Does she seem like second, she's telling the truth? In second edition, it's a spell. Detect lie. Or is it? Yeah. Is it? Okay. Well, I don't have that one marked. Yeah, I think it's both wizard and priest, if I'm not mistaken. There's also um, <clears throat> ESP. That allows you to sense surface thoughts, so, you know, if she was lying, she might say something mentally to herself, like, you know, hopefully, you know, <laughs> yes, my mother is good, except for all those times where she beat the, you know, beat the servants and, yeah, you know, whatever. Something that she leaves out of her, what she says. So you can use, there's several spells you can use. Detect lied, um, ESP, and uh, some other ones. I think ESP is only wizards, though. But I'm sure Detect Lie is priest. Yeah, it's fourth level priest spell. Oh, wizards don't have it. Wow. Well, it's they have ESP. Fourth level so. spell? Is it really? Yeah. Holy cow. So you're almost high enough level to cast it, right? Yeah, one more. And I would have a fourth. But yeah, oh, that's. I did not. That's the big spell. Um, I think I could be okay with that. But I would, I would want to come back here and check on things at some point. You say that out oh, loud. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I asked Varen, "Will you study the area, and then we can come back when we need to?" Varen says, "Very well. We shall need to return if they uh, resort to their old tactics, anyhow." That, that would be acceptable for me. Okay. Anything else for Fenmore? Uh, no. Okay, one more round, and the Legend Lore will be ready on that girdle. Shandrak. And company. Uh, Shandrak 
turns to Asher and says, So, um, uh, well, well, it uh, turns to Anatar and says, um, so do you, um, do you think that we should, uh, get a few hours on the road before we identify, or should we identify here? Anatar says, rest. Anatar says, uh, I can identify anywhere! I am very good at it! <laughs> and, uh, Asher says, um, well, I've seen him do it. He takes a long time, man. and he is so good at it. You're 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 great at it, Anatar. And she gives him a thumbs up, uh, but it takes a while. Um, <laughs> and she says, uh, "Won't be able to travel for long." Um, this may well said there are soldiers though too. Possible we may want to get away from the. And she looks around at all the gore crime scene. That's what I mean. If we're gonna identify here we probably either want to just kind of set up and wait or get some space between us and them <laughs> I like that idea um so Haniko speaks up and she says uh Please, stay as long as you like. No harm will befall you. Our uh, soldiers will not harm you. I will not allow it. Neither will my mother. And Jim see her from that area? I think he can. So Jim have, has detect, detect lie once a day. You have given our, uh, our men uh, honorable deaths. And you have released my father from his uh, torture. Okay, she moves so you can see her. Side lies Varen and Jim, <laughs> seeing if one of them can <laughs> take a look at her. <laughs> Jim nods. <laughs> yes, I know one of you could look at her. <laughs> she says, uh, so kind, thank you. And she <laughs> looks at Jim and, like, and she, like, raises her eyebrows. <laughs> if you wish, we have fresh rice and beef and vegetable in the kitchen. Sure, kind of, uh, like, hops on her, uh, balls her feet and says, uh, Ooh, do you have those sticks you eat with? Did you tell her about sticks. the sticks? Yes, of course. Oh, those were fun. Those were so fun. <laughs> also, the local tradition is to barbecue bits of beef on skewers uh, in a sweet uh, barbecue sauce made with uh, so <laughs> made with uh, oil and wine and uh, soy sauce. Well, how can I refuse your hospitality now? I'm sure it's almost visibly watering at the mouth. It's made with sake, mirin, soy sauce, and oil. It makes the meat very sweet. Mm, I can prepare this for you if you wish. <gasps> yes, please. Very well. And, uh, mm -hmm. Hanako disappears into the kitchen. Oh, she doesn't have sight. Okay. Last thing I'll do on my turn is that Erdrin will move silently and follow her. 
Okay. Oh yeah, outside of combat, uh, your movement's doubled. So oh. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that the first round. Yeah. Alright, so there's a door right here. Mm -hmm. And um, from beyond it, you hear the clanking of uh, pans and the pouring of, like, water, something. Mm -hmm. And um, you can already smell the smell of teriyaki. That's what the samurai were eating when you rolled up. It was lunchtime. So they were, there's like plates of teriyaki on the tables in the rooms where you guys haven't gone. Um, it's cold by now, obviously. Uh, but uh, you can hear her like chopping vegetables and starting up a fire. <clears throat> Like a ksh, ksh from flint and steel being knocked together. And a sudden uh, roar of a fire. All right. Uh, Asher and company. Asher uh, asks Anatar, says, uh, will you move that sword? And uh, Anatar steps up and picks up the... Nodachi. Nodachi, yeah. And he's gonna back in the chest. Step back here. Asher will come over here and pick up the Kote where from that pile uh Mar said he would have put it in the pile with the, oh, okay. with the armor. And then yeah. she'll step over here and put it down. Okay. Alright, let's have a um Let's have like a three minute break. Okay, we'll be right back in three. Okay. Ash, are you there? All right, I hear my name. Yes. needs to have had magic detected on it for him to have a chance at identifying it so pulling it up i'm going to put things and change the color of the ones that are ready to be identified okay so I, so the book hasn't been identified or detected yet that's correct in order for him to be able to detect it it has to okay. detect magic so, um, it be identified has to detect magic Excellent. As a shorthand, so we know it is able to be identified, I will make those items. We'll turn the text blue.
And we're back. Uh, you said Asher put down the Kote? Asher put the Kote. Okay. And then Jim is heading toward the kitchen. for what was her name again uh the daughter or the or the wife yeah. uh oh he found her oh, hurry hanako hanako uh, so there's there's a door it's not locked it just slides oh wow so he walked yeah all right oh it's open okay Uh, so he walks in and uh, holds up his hands and a like, don't have any like like a universal hands up. Don't don't worry about a gesture. It yeah. does. Uh, she's got a big uh, ass butcher knife in her hands. She's cutting. <laughs> she's cutting um, lettuce and cabbage. Says uh. Thank you for your hospitality. Um, I must hear from my companions, as I'm sure you understand. But please, just assure me one uh, more time uh, that no harm will come to them if they stay here. Of course. It is the honorable thing to do. And I guess since he moved, he'll have to detect lie on that on his next turn. He has it memorized. As a cleric of hair, or as a yeah, especially oh, priest of hair. Oh yeah, it's a granted power. A day. Yeah. Um. So that is a uh, innate like spell abil innate spell like okay. ability for him, because do that. it is not a slotted spell. Okay, so he can cast it right now. Like, what he could have cast that? it while walking. That's the cool thing about innate spell like abilities. <clears throat> Which is uh, any, anything like that, or any, if it comes from an item, like if it's once a day or any, any, like any spell, like that. any spell that doesn't occupy a spell slot of a spellcaster yeah. is an innate spell like ability. Scrolls too. Uh, I scrolls think uh, scroll scrolls. You cast them with the same um. Like a spell, because it's really great. I I th I'm pretty sure they have the same <clears throat> casting time as the actual spell. The scrolls do. I'm back. Okay. Uh, so he detects no lie from her. Like she truly. Um, feels like she's doing the honorable thing by uh, serving her, basically her conquerors, um, lunch. Jim nods and says, I thank you, lady. He's just going to hang out in the Again. kitchen with her for another minute. <laughs> Again, it is the most honorable thing to do. Jim says, uh, I can understand that. Um, my lady Hira is, uh, she is a goddess of, uh, many of the domestic arts, and she herself endured much hardship, and yet maintained grace and, uh, and is honorable among her peers. Anything else for Asher and company? Nope. Okay. Uh, she's like um, uh, preparing the sauce. It looks like um, a small bottle of sake into a bowl. Some mirin, which is kind of like sake, but it's sweeter and less has less alcohol. And then uh, some like black soy sauce 
and uh, some oil and maybe a little bit of minced garlic she throws in. No, not garlic. No, Japanese don't eat garlic. Yeah, she uh, and she mixes it up. <clears throat> mixes it up with uh, like a wooden spoon or something and throws, she chops a bunch of <clears throat> meat up. There's like a, I don't know, like a brisket of meat on one of the tables. And she like slices this perfectly, I want to say like quarter inch, um, like uh, slab off of it. And uh, lays it flat and cuts it into um, strips that are probably uh, like a like, I, I, yeah, like half inch thick and half an inch wide and about an inch long. And uh, she puts them. She she takes these little uh, little balsa wood sticks and. Um, little skewers and, and puts them on skewers and then she dips dips it into the uh, meat and throws it over this uh, thing that looks like a grill it's got coals in the bottom uh, that are hot it's, it's wood coals so it looks like wood and uh, they're red hot <clears throat> and um, the the grill itself is kind of covered in ashes <clears throat> so as she puts the meat down it instantly um, leaves, like, you know, the black stripes from the grill on uh, the meat. And uh, she, she cooks them with, uh, there's, like, this clamp that goes across the, um, uh, the skewers. So that they're all kind of like a flat plane that she can pick up with one hand and then flip over <coughs> with another hand. Or with you know flip flip over and with and with one hand kind of go back and forth and that's what she does she kind of she kind of you know sets it down <clears throat> the meat down on the grill picks it up watches it cook flips it over you know starts cooking the other side kind of picks it up watches it cook and there's like flames or not flames but um smoke coming up into her face and she kind of blows the smoke out <clears throat> out of the way and um. She's got this little fan, and she's fanning fanning the meat, uh, and uh, it it makes the coals hot, and it kind of keeps the uh, smoke away from her face, and um, <clears throat> uh, like cools the the backside of the meat a little faster, and then she she'll flip it again, and it takes it looks like it takes a lot of skill to do this. Um, Tim reaches out <laughs> to see if uh, to see if he can help her uh, with the fan. Yeah, she's. It looks like she's done it a hundred times, and uh, she kind of like um, dips it back in the sauce again, and then puts it back onto the hibachi. And um, once it's done, she puts the skewers on a plate, and there's some uh, rice that's already cooked in a pot, and she uh, kind of scoops out some some rice and. Um, <clears throat> this salad she prepared ahead of time. It has um, thinly sliced uh, cabbage and um, uh, uh, lettuce and carrots in it. And it's covered in this, like, um, I want to say, like, mother of pearl looking kind of creamy, sweet smelling sauce. Mm -hmm. Um,. And she has uh, tossed it, so it's it's covered in it, kind of like uh, Caesar salad. It's all it's all covered in almost you know, and um, <clears throat> uh, she kind of scoops a little bit out of that onto the plate as well. And she hands she hands Jim a plate. It's got two skewers of beef uh, strips on it, um, and a little mountain of rice, and uh, a little like mountain of um salad she gives him two two uh sticks that um kind of they're kind of pointy uh they're they're made of like uh wood but they're lacquered um the same same type of lacquer as that uh that rod except uh they're not white they're they're red and um they have little uh 
mother of pearl uh, diamonds down two sides. About um, five or six of them down each side. They're pretty ornate. And uh, uh, like I said, they're, they're pointy, but the uh, part that you hold is um, square. And uh, they whittle down to like a round, pointy, kind of slightly pointy tip. It's rounded because it's lacquered. So the wood underneath might be pointy, but the lacquer made it round. And uh, <clears throat> she, she like nods to him, like, here you go, you know, and here, and she hands him, you know, this ornate pair of chopsticks. Jim thanks her, and he uses the chopsticks to spear his uh, a chunk of meat, <laughs> yeah. and he eats it that way. <laughs> yeah. uh, luckily, the uh, the meat is still on skewers, so he could just pick up the skewer if he wanted to. Okay, yeah, he's gonna <laughs> do that. <laughs> but the, the rice seems like it might be a little challenge. Um... Yeah, uh, Tenzian Company. Um, Ashriel will again take the five-foot step, turn to the west towards where the Kote were laid down by Asher and detect magic. Oh, that's right, Kote. Uh, so these are not the ones from the daimyo, they're the ones from the chest, correct? Uh, I think they were the daimyo. Yeah, the well, daimyos. Well, Fenmar said that some... he is wearing the ones from the daimyo. I didn't put them on, I just had them. He made, okay. like, a pile of stuff. Oh, Fenmar, you took you took off the armor? I, I didn't. I was going to clean it first, but I didn't put it on yet. Oh, okay. Okay. So you have the Daimyo's Kote and uh, Splint Mail. Yeah, so the one these Kote now? are the ones from the chest. These Kote are the Daimyo. No, Fenmar has the Daimyo's Kote. I thought he said he put it in this pile. In that pile. Then I had Asher pick it up from the pile. Ah, put okay. It over here. <laughs> gotcha. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I can't find an actual picture of Kote, but um, so these are the Daimyo's Kote. Anything else from Asher and company? No. It was Tenzin's turn. Uh, Tenzin and company. Asher will do the detect magic on the Kote that were laid down in front of him. Or laid to that square. Take a five foot step facing west. Do you detect magic? Essentially, these are gauntlets, right? That's what a coat nope. is. Nope, they are a sleeve. <clears throat> so oh, it's the like in, a, a, a the entire up, the entire up to the, up to the shoulders, and they're tied together um, by with a a, a belt buckle um, in your on your back, or a, uh, a, a rope tied in a ornate knot, or um, two pieces of cloth tied in an ornate knot. Uh, these ones are, um, I think the, the coolest ones I've ever seen, even Kabuto are, are held together by rope, <clears throat> like gold, gold rope. So these are, uh, sleeves that basically are a combination of 
um, like chain <clears throat> and uh, uh, scale. It's like the whole sleeve is made of mail. Yeah. And it and it covers. Um, it goes down uh, all the way to the second knuckle on the hand. And there's like a, each individual finger has essentially like a fingerless glove. Uh, that um, you know you stick through, but the palms of your hands are open, and so are the ends of your fingers. So you can still uh, fight with uh, katana, you know, normally, and uh, um, you can still knock arrows uh, n normally, as though your your arms were your hands were naked. <clears throat> Uh, okay. And... So Asher is... Kind of looking like this way or something. Because to me, on my no, screen, it's, you're looking left. Yeah, left. Because I took a five-foot step to here. Because the cote were laid here, did detect magic, and then I stepped back. Can you draw a picture where the cote were draw an X, where the cote are? Because I don't, I don't have a cote picture. Oh, and I'm gonna put Asher. Kay. So on my screen, you're facing way. you're facing this way, on my screen. I, I forgot again, to get Asher out of the way. <laughs> five foot step to here. Detect magic facing that way. And then I stepped back. There we go. All right. So you definitely detect. Oh shit. <laughs> you definitely detect overwhelming magic. <laughs> As, uh, <laughs> Tenzi will um, go to each one of the children, lay a hand on them, and um, give a blessing that the sun, the light of Ushis, will guide their days going forward. So they take the two, the two young girls and the young man, or boy. And, uh, and that'll be it for us this turn. It's 12.59 and next up is Fenmar. Uh, I am. On this guy right here. Instruct it to clean up the rest of the bodies. Uh, casting time is one round. Alright, uh, so legend lore 
on that girdle is ready. Um, let's see where there he is. Uh, okay. The wrong, I, I sent the wrong level. I sent you a paranoia note uh, to Ryer. You there, Shandrak? That's, that's all I found out about it? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes. uh, so yeah, uh, will... There's a 1% chance per level that you know everything. So that square has to be green for it to succeed. And then uh, you succeeded at uh, knowing whether items are cursed or evil, and also who can use the item. Okay, I'm uh, pretty good. That is automatic information. The one, the line for who can use it. That's uh, general bardic lore. So, and then the next one is. Uh, it's like your level times 5% or whatever, you know, as a percentile. And then the next one down is literally 1% per level to know everything about it. And that one is just as good as, you know, pretty much just as good as an identified spell. So, but you have to be oh. rolling pretty good on that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then so, uh, any, anything else for Shandrak uh -huh. and company? Uh, yeah. So Ryer will, um, after it does his thing, he'll turn to Shandrak and say, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what it does, but not cursed or evil. And uh, anybody can put it on. And uh, Shandrak will say, okay. I'll, uh, and, uh, and he takes it from Ryer. And it's like, uh, I'd like to hold on to this. Uh, uh, before we uh, identify it. Shandrak is currently holding it. Uh. Shandrak. And Shandrak. since you said it's not... Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you oh, can no. you hear Amber? Uh -huh. Yes. Is Shandrak currently in possession of the girdle then, or is Ryer? I get confused. Uh, about yeah, that. Shandrak is now. Okay. And, uh, Shandrak says, and uh, if it's not cursed, then uh, I'll try to put it on. And then he put, locks the girdle over himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it uh, like shrinks to fit you because you're you're fairly a thin guy compared to the last user, and um, the you know as soon as you buckle it together, it shrinks to fit you. The uh, buckle has like three prongs on it, so it's and it's really wide. It's like a foot wide. <clears throat> And the, um, all the, uh, uh, like, belt holes are, um, reinforced with, uh, metal grommets. So it's really, really sturdy. <clears throat> and it has a belt loop on the other side, so you can put the excess through it. Um, and anything else from Shandrak and company? 
Uh, Erdren will, feeling satisfied, uh, come closer to back to the group. Oh, okay. Uh, Asher and company. So, Gemma thinks the woman and it's back to the group. And goes through the hole we made in the wall. Back up. And as he sees the uh, Kote there, kind of looks back at where he was standing. And he gets this look like someone who like just realized they're standing in front of the television during the Super Bowl or something. Yeah. And he's like, oh, so sorry, so sorry. Uh, you might want to check those again. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I was in the way. <laughs> uh, food's done, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tenzi and company. Last time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, step over. Uh, face to the west. And detect magic on the cote and whatever else is 60 feet from. And satisfyingly, again, you read overwhelming enchantment magic from the west. Yeah. Bruh. <laughs> um, is Fenmar casting a spell? Fenmar, yes, he is actually. A uh, spell craft role will tell you what school or sphere it is from. Looks like he's casting it on the dead body. Right here. This dead samurai. It's fine. Okay. Um, he's just going to observe them. See what's yeah. going on. Um, Samurai's kind of twitching. Like his lips and his eyelids. And he lets out kind of like a groan. Sashi's going to take out, um, he was given uh, 700 gold, 750 gold from Tenzi as his share from this, and he's going to put half of it back into the chest, 375. Okay. Time now is... Asher says, I don't think you understand. We're taking things out of the chest, Musashi. <laughs> we must provide for the family. We cannot leave them destitute. Despite the sins of the father. Asher cocks her head and, and shrugs and says, You are a good man. I'm still keeping mine. <laughs> I am taking a most precious family heirloom. Must leave something in return. <laughs> no, that's his spoils of war, so he is obligated. Uh, time now is 1 p.m. And Fenmar, you finished casting your spell. And you guys hear this Coming from this corpse. And. The corpse. Begins to rise. We just killed him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Meaning at work. 
I don't feel like <laughs> you getting... put that back where you found it, young man. <laughs> I will instruct it to clean up the dead bodies. Albeit, it is very gray compared to what it looked like when it was alive. My god, these poor kids. <laughs> I guess I should have thought of this first. Is this one isn't headless, is it? This isn't the one you freaking lopped the head off, was it? I don't remember. All right. <clears throat> uh, so it uh, rises as a zombie, and it begins shambling out of the room. One. Two, three, four, five, six, saying, If uh, Tenzi has an attack of opportunity, he will take it. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Lucius does not abide the undead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't really either, but I, it, it was an evil creature or a bad person, and I'm using it to do some menial work. Clean up work. I understand though. Oh man, you're gonna uh, kill it one it, hit. Yeah, you uh, you crit it for Got 21 damage because it technically is shieldless. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, 21 damage. I, I should have picked one of the other ones. <laughs> Ugh. Uh. I figured that wasn't going to work in the back of my head. Like, too many of you guys okay. are. So it just gets past Tenzi. And, and I just turn and kick it yeah. right in the head. Yeah. The head rolls over by Fenmar. And I said, <laughs> did you do that? Yeah, no need to even roll um, initiative because uh, zombies always go last. So it's basically like automatic surprise. Almost. Someone says, wasn't me. And it falls to the ground, re-dead. Yes, I did. I didn't feel like getting gross, cleaning up all these bodies. Okay. Uh, Fenmar, go ahead and look at your uh, character identity uh, blocks. Like at the very top, mm -hmm. I just I just wanted you to see something. Just a small change has occurred. Just a tiny. <laughs> it hasn't officially changed. It's just tendencies right now. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> that's very very redeemable. I figured it might, but yeah. It hasn't it hasn't changed yet. It's just a little tendency, right? A little. Uh, right. The legend lore is done. Next up is Shandrak and Company. Um. So I suppose yeah. I think uh, Ryer will say uh. Uh, anybody want me to look at the ring before we identify it? I think Anatar has the ring, right? 
Did I feel, did I feel anything oh, no. when I put it on? No, no, okay. not a thing. It's I was like yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it does anything. Yes, Anatar is holding the ring. He he holds it above his head and says, "Uh, sure, you can come to me, or I'll bring it to you." Uh, don't you worry. I'm gonna identify this thing really well. Very good at it. You will, but. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I got a hunch about something. I don't know. I don't know. The Ryer will come on over and try to legend lore the ring. Ah. Akuma Estate Ring. It's for you, right? Oh, wow. <clears throat> okay. Uh... Anything else for Shandrak and company? Uh, yeah, that'll be all. Just Shandrak's just kind of like, yeah. when when the zombie came up, he just kind of was on his tiptoes and kind of leaned back because <laughs> it was right next to him. <laughs> uh, Asher and company. Almost forgot, and also a reminder for Shandrak. Oh, uh, right. Oh. Also, three hundred points for Fenmar. Sorry. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you can't you can't have penalties without the reward. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Almost, for, almost forgot, and I'll say that loud for Shandra too. But we uh, we get to take XP for that gold that we got divided for anyone with a thief class, right? Yeah, uh, you get um, two XP per gold. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Four yeah. thousand XP. No, that's just what you get. So, her group didn't get much each. Oh, she she yeah, divides it among like seven characters. Between... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the brokest thief you ever met. <laughs> <laughs> but Shandrak's <Right>. group. <laughs> Shandrak's group. <clears throat> hey, magical items have gold and EXP values too. Yeah. Uh, and I, I so... actually award those XP values too. When you find out what it what the item is. So Anatar has handed that ring over to Ryer and Asher motions him over and asks him to this uh the Daimyo's armor in the same square we've been moving everything else to. He does he moves back to where he was. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so he can only move the one object, so Asher will step forward and grab the Kote. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, Asher has the Kote. Okay. And is moving very slowly. <laughs> Anything else for Asher and company? Okay, Tenzi. All right. Um.
Uh, you get faint, uh... Mm. Faint all magic from this. Okay. Wait, wait. This is the, this is the Daimyo's armor? Yes. Or is it the one in the... Daimyo's split mail. Daimyo's split mail. Okay. So much treasure took a small session. <laughs> uh, haven't even identified it yet. Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Okay. Uh, you sense. Uh, overwhelming. Um. Um, let's see, overwhelming, I'm going to say charm, yeah, charm, uh, sphere. He will relate that to the group. Uh, so Tenzi will turn to Benmar and ask if he, if that spell he did raised that zombie. Just uh, testing your reflexes. Uh, <laughs> the light of Lucius is to destroy undead. I will not abide that. Nor I. Princess. Roger. <laughs> Who is this Roger? <laughs> <laughs> Was that his name? <laughs> Roger the Zombie? Ro Roger the Samurai. Roger, Roger Aki Yuma. <laughs> uh, Tenzi returns to the treasure chest he puts in. Uh, this, his 750 gold share he puts back 675. <laughs> And then looks over at Asher. <laughs> <laughs> Asher shakes her head. <laughs> um, and that'll be <clears throat> for him. Although, did um, he did Tenzi get XP for one on one combat with a zombie? <laughs> Uh, sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Give your give yourself give yourself fifteen XP. Yeah. <laughs> the he doesn't get bonus for a single combat. <laughs> Isn't that a thing? I don't think One it is. One man against Roger the Zombie. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it is. Take the 15. <laughs> That's uh, 15, not 50, right? Yep, 1 5. 1 5, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, and that'll be it for us. Alright. It's 1201. Hanako comes out of the uh, kitchen area with a big tray into the dojo where you guys are at and it has a pot of rice um, a serving platter with a pile of uh, big ass pile of beef skewers there's a bowl of salad and um, there's also a bowl of uh, edamame, which 
for anyone who doesn't know, it's um, pods of uh, uh, soybeans um, that are, you know, ripe off of the vine or whatever. And uh, you can you can eat the whole thing if you want or just, you know, kind of pop them out of the pod like, uh, like peas almost. And they taste kind of like, like better than peas. Uh, they're kind of sweet and um, have like a waxy kind of flavor. Um, the flesh of it is um, tender and doesn't turn into like a powdery substance when you chew it. It just kind of breaks up into pieces um kind well like a bean but uh you know they're pleasant or whatever and um there's some uh like extra sauce and like some sort of uh gravy boat looking thing and uh a pot of tea and there's like a stack of teacups almost over her head and a stack of plates nearly up to her chin. And um, she's like struggling to hold it up and she sets it down on the floor, actually. Um, just right in front of her. And it has all this hella good stuff on it. And, uh, chopsticks and whatnot. And she, like, just kind of bows and exits the room. And goes back, whoops. Goes back to tending her children. Thank you, it looks so good. Really nice for a lady who has husband with a scale. <laughs> okay, uh, next up is, first up is Fenmar and company. I'll follow suit and I'll come up and I'll put 250 gold into the chest. Okay. Just to reiterate, um, for the rogues, if you do put money back, you don't get experience for the money you put back. Right? It's adorable. You think I just put money back. <laughs> yeah, good to know. I don't think it's going to need to be necessary. <laughs> yeah. well, um, why not eat? Yeah, the smell of it is... Oh my god, it smells so good. Um, After a, a good slaughter. What, who's, <laughs> who's got an appetite? <laughs> yeah. The exercise uh, we just did. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, plenty of barbecue and rice and salad and edamame to go around. And... Uh, green tea. It's just green tea. It's she just <laughs> straight up made green tea, uh, and um, didn't uh, serve it or anything. Okay. Uh, Legend Lord is gonna take one more round. Shandrak and company. Shandrak is uh, starting to get hungry after uh, that food came in, so uh, he comes over to the food. And it makes himself a big plate of, like, you know, a little bit of everything. And then he comes back over, and he sits down, and he's about to eat, but then Erdrin appears from hiding in shadows and, like, grabs Shandrak's hand with the chopsticks and is like, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Erdrin, like, takes the chopsticks and takes, like, a tiny piece of rice 
and he eats it, and he tries to detect if it's poison. <laughs> oh, with the spell? No, with his assassin skill. <laughs> oh, right. Um, what was that? Intelligence check? Or did I set it up on a macro? It's... Oh, that's a good question. Um... Uh... Oh, nope. I press kit assassin abilities, but I don't get anything. Just get the hashtag kit assassin abilities. Oh, just a second. Find kit assassin abilities. Okay, I got to turn it on for all players. Save changes. Uh, poison odor. All players save changes. Poison Sight. All players save changes. Poison Symptom. All players save changes. Uh, poison Taste. All players save changes. Okay, go ahead and do it again. And then... I'm assuming by taste, because you just ate it. That's what I'm doing. I'm pretty sure I, I finished all these. Or I gotta double check his proficiency real quick, because it asks. He has herbalism. And healing. What, did it just roll the thing again? Okay. Uh, sorry, yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, it takes one round. Okay, and Sandrak's just like, <laughs> longing looking like at the food, like, what? <laughs> no, what do you, come on. <laughs> okay, Asher and company. It's yeah. gonna take a whole round, so, yeah. Yeah. A Asher and company. Yeah, no, Shandrak's got hungrily looking at it. <laughs> uh, Jim is uh, wolfing his down. And she's like, good enough for me. <laughs> and so... Uh, but... They're also still working this problem, so... Anatar will take away the... Amio's splint mail. And the at his feet, uh, you know, kind of collecting the stuff he's going to be identifying. Then Karen Glor is going to come and bring the splint mail from the chest. And then step back. <clears throat> and Asher is going to come and get a plate. And she's going to use her chopsticks and try to, like, show Jim uh, what Tenzi taught her. It's like, oh, you just put it like this. And, uh, and Jim looks at it, and, um, he looks at Asher and shakes his head, and he just picks him up with his fingers. All right. Tinsy and company. Yes, real one of five foot step here, face towards the west, and identify the splint mail from the chest. Or not identify, detect magic, sorry. And then step back. All right, this one uh, is uh, faint all sphere. <clears throat> it's an enchantment, it's faint, faint enchantment.
And you don't find her. She went over to the other side. She looked around a little bit and uh, shrugged his shoulders and come back in here. And have some tea. Right. Uh, time now is 1.02 p.m. Fenmar and company. Legend lore for the Akuma Ring is finished. Uh, there's, uh, he doesn't, Erdrin doesn't detect any poison in the food. Uh, oh, boss. Yeah. Shandrak's like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, Ryer uh, finds the name of this ring as uh, Ring of Warmth. And its general effects are that it keeps you warm when it's cold. So that's why Fenmar didn't feel any effects because it is summertime right now. All right. Yeah, Ryer lets everybody know. It's like, yeah, this ring keeps you warm at night. Wish I had a ring of warmth. It's cold. And uh, then, uh, yeah, Ryer and Erdrin will get their own plates and they'll start eating some food. All right. Asher and company. Asher and Jim are continuing to uh, eat their food. Um, Natar will take a splint mail away. And Karen Glor is going to bring over the cote from the chest. And step away. Okay. Tinsy and company. He's wearing out a spot in the floor here as he takes a five foot <laughs> step. He just All right. detects <laughs> magic and then steps back. It's a dim enchantment magic on these cote. Okay, time now is 103, Fenmar and Company. I keep eating. Okay. Unless I'm full. Shanrak and Company. <laughs> you said there's sake. Um, she didn't bring out any sake. She brought out tea. Um, but, uh, tea. yeah. There's, well, your character doesn't know where the sake is. Or that it <laughs> even is there. You could go looking for sake. That's right. Okay. Uh, Shandrak and company? Uh. Or a last samurai. Uh, yeah, Shandrak will, uh, well, he'll finally start eating relieved, <laughs> and, um, uh, then I'll say, so, is that, I think we've detected every, just about everything, and Ryer's looked at a couple of things, so, you just want to finish eating and then try to identify? Um, Tenzi says he has to, um, let 
Astral Detect Magic on the book. Oh, the book. That's true. The book. Um, and Asher says, also, we haven't done the girdle or the rod, if you guys wanted those identified. And Anatar says, I almost certainly can't identify all of those things in one night, but we can pick the ones we are that are most, most important. Well, he did. <laughs> I guess, do we further need to identify the rod if you did the lore on it? Uh, um, if, you, pretty... if you want to get the, um, the experience for it, you'll need to identify it. Okay. Karen Glor says, whatever he isn't able to finish tonight, I'll help with tomorrow. Okay. And, uh, I well, if we would include that. Well, if we do want to do it in the morning, then depending on how many things we can do, I might help with the identification. Also, there's uh, That's some a great things. Idea. There's also some other things to know about the rod uh, regarding um, how many uh, charges each resurrection costs. So, is it? Uh, I mean, that information is useful. Charges, yeah, yeah. Because <clears throat> you know, if you run, if you run a rod out of charges, it's no longer magical. Like you, you basically lose the uh, permanency spell or any kind of magic that was used to create it. And you have to, if you want to, re you know, recharge it again after that, you have to essentially recreate the item. Um, other than you already have the raw materials created. So you won't have to go on adventures to get the shillelagh from, you know, the uh, hangman tree and um, the, you know, uh, Kraken ink used to make the uh, lacquer or whatever and the crystal from the carbuncle's forehead that was used to, you know, make the the, the, the doorknob handle thing. <clears throat> you don't have to do any of that stuff. You already have a discharge rod of resurrection, so you, you still have to research how to recharge it. And you probably have to know how to use, you know, the resurrection spell. So you, you wouldn't even be able to recharge it until you were, what, level four, 14? Yeah, that's when they get level seven spells. Yeah, level seven spells. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, anything else for Shandrak and company? Yeah, Shandrak will uh, just say, "Oh yeah, well, sure. If we, uh, I don't, I don't have identify prepared, but if we're gonna do it in the morning, then I'll chip in. I'll do what I can tonight, and we'll finish tomorrow." Sounds good. Sandrak is stuff in his mouth. <laughs> so you guys want to cleanse the items now and then identify them and then participate in the nap after the identification is done? Yes, please. Okay, so being that it's after one, it's going to be after nine that you're going to participate in the uh, nap spell. Um, but everybody pretty much naps, so you just have like a slightly later morning or something. Um, Before we fast forward to that, uh, just a reminder, there are three atoms that we haven't detected magic on yet. Oh, yeah. Um, nobody detected magic on the book, right? Correct. Book, the girdle, or the rod. Yeah. So, uh, Shandrak will, uh, take off the girdle and say, yeah, Ryer took a look at it, but sure, he can detect the magic, too. And, uh, he'll put his food down, and he'll put the girdle in front of Asher, uh, in front of Asheril. And there's, a split mail laying there? Can you... Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Kote. Uh, Kote, sorry. Then, north of Shandrak, then? Anything there? I don't see anything. It's north of Asher. 
Okay, yeah, I don't see that. So I'll put just north of Shandrak, if there's nothing there. on the girdle. I guess it's kind of like this. Kind of like that. Mm -hmm. It's just bigger. All right. Anything else for Shandrak and company? Uh, yeah. While uh, while Shandrak is distracted, Erdren uh, pours a glass of tea, and then he tastes that and takes it for poison as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead and identify After poison by taste. <laughs> One round. And, Shandrak, and then Shandrak walks back, like, dismayed, like, oh, I'm so thirsty, I didn't get a chance to drink yet. Asher and company. Let's see. So, seeing that Shriel already has something prepared, um, I'm just gonna continue eating. Cotterbill's gonna come around and get some. And Gloria and Anatar are gonna continue uh, continue their business. Aaron's gonna next to this wall, and he's not actually he's not gonna into a form the Canadian's just gonna kind of stare at everyone who's <laughs> brooding okay. uh, Tenzi and company um, are the Kote still here no um Shandrak picked him up he said okay to the children here. See if they want to take any. Oops, they want to step on top of them. But go here. Oh yeah. oh yeah. They each come over and um, you know, grab a skewer of food and uh, one of them grabs some um, <clears throat> chopsticks and starts digging into the rice. One of them just reaches out and grabs some lettuce and uh, some edamame. While he's doing that, Asher will step up, up face to the west and detect magic on the girdle. Okay. Uh, this one is. I'm going to say overwhelming combat magic. Combat, uh, Ooh. combat sphere. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Okay, anything else from Tenzi and company? Uh, no, Musashi's continuing to eat. And that'll be it for us. Alright, 
time now is 1.04 p.m. Next up is Fenmar's move. Uh, I'll swap the rod. All right. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> that looks like a screw. Poison in the uh, in the tea either. <laughs> Kandrak and company. Uh, uh, Kandrak, Erdrin's <laughs> uh, like good. <laughs> and Shandrak's like okay, thank you very much. Feeling much more thirsty, like you know, he wasn't that thirsty before, but not being able to drink made him thirsty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then he drinks up his tea. Um. It's like unsweetened green tea, so I mean, it's kind of kind of bitter. Uh, I don't I don't know what Japanese used a long time ago to sweeten their tea or if they even did. Maybe honey or honey? something. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh we'll yeah, we'll just be enjoying our meal for now. Uh, Asher and company. Okay, so, in, uh, in Mark with the Rod there, did he take away the... Okay, yeah, it's gone. So the girdle's gone. Uh, yeah, they're just gonna keep eating. Alright, Tenzi and company. Almost there, boys. Uh, all right, uh, you get uh, overwhelming necromantic magic. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, that's right. With, we already figured um, it out. Yeah. <laughs> what is this one? It's necromantic. What? What is this one? Overwhelming necromancy. No. What is he Rod. projecting on? Oh yeah, right. Okay. For a second, I forgot what it did, but now I remember. Like all, all light, like all heal spells are necromancy, so it's it's really weird. Well, the healing spells are in the healing sphere. Resurrection is in the necromancy sphere. No, cure light is necromancy. No, it's in the healing sphere. It is in the necromancy school, but in oh, the healing right. yeah. sphere. Healing sphere, yeah. Alright, yeah. Uh, anything else for Tenzi and company? Nope, that's it. Alright, uh, so time now is 1.05 p.m. Fenmar and company. Um, alleviate on air drain. Say again? Just alleviate on air drain. Oh, yeah, air drain. Still... Still in racking pain. Still worried about yeah. Shandrak. Being so nice, yeah. tasting tasting for poison for his master, Shandrak. Shandrak. 
Shandrak drives a tough bargain. If you're an assassin, you're all automatically his food taster. <laughs> well, Shandrak's dismayed. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so no go for Erdrin. He's uh, still got that racking pain going on. Okay, Shandrak and company. Uh, so, uh, did we did we need to detect anything else? Was there all the last thing, or did we have one more thing? Um, the, the, book. Book. the book. The book. The book. The book. Yes. Okay. The book. So. The Shandrak will dress the, uh, the scarf and down his boots some more. Asher and company. Oh, Penzi actually has the book, so uh, Natar will come by and pick up his skewer and kind of sh shove it, and <laughs> like shovel it down before he starts cleansing objects. And Karen Glor will come over and much more respectably for building a plate. Actually, yeah. And then Anatar will step over here with his skewer the way or we'll come over here out of the way that'll be it all right uh tinsy and company um miss ash will get up uh from eating grab the rod and um, give it to fenlar and then go back to eating uh tinsy will move up Place the book down in the square, and then step back, and Asriel will again move to there, detect magic, and move back. All right. Um, let's see. Ooh, that book looks fancy. What's the name of that spell that uh, priests use uh, where they um, let other people cast their spells? Um, uh, 
there is um, imbue with spell ability and yeah. there is um, uh, is that a new one? that's the one I wanted imbue with spell ability I was thinking bestow but it's imbue Okay, um, so from this book, uh, you sense overwhelming charm, uh, sphere. <laughs> yeah, overwhelming charm sphere. Good job, Ashriel. Your mouth smells like great job, Ashriel. Right there. Right. Uh, time now is 1:06 p.m. Next up is Fenmar. Probably, you guys are probably almost full by now. <clears throat> it's been a good five minutes of like stuffing face. Alleviate again. On Airdrin. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. A save versus spell and a minus two penalty. Jeez. Oh, that was close. That one was close. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, it was. Um, Shandrak and company. Uh, yep, just, uh, knowing myself, getting full, and, uh, kind of getting ready to, uh, 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 change up my spells for the nap, so we can help with identifying stuff later. Okay. Asher and company. Natar is going to start collecting the objects and uh, and bring them over here. Start cleansing them, and Asher's going to start uh, kind of trying to collect or bring over the stuff that she has, and is motioning everyone to place their objects kind of around Natar. Step back and just give them some space and quiet to start cleansing stuff. Okay. Uh, how many people have identified? Is it just Anatar for, for now? I think so. Okay. Uh, Tenzi and company. Uh, Tenzi will go take the book, place it at Anatar's feet, uh, and then go to the food, prepare a plate. Ashriel does not need to eat, um, so he will just. Uh, Actually, he's been flying this whole time. I think he'll land now. <laughs> 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 so he actually wasn't wearing out a hold on the floor because he was flying. Yeah, but, that's uh, very impressive. <laughs> um, and uh, that'll be it for him. Musashi has finished eating. Uh, and uh, following Tenzi's lead, he will prepare a plate of food and bring it out to see if the children or their mother eat. Yeah, the mother mother digs in to the uh, food. Seems like uh, she's been waiting to eat for like a couple hours or something. Yeah, he'll bow, give her, you know, hold out the plate to her, bow as she takes it, and then walk back into the place. Time now is 1.07 p.m. And Fenmar, Fenmar's move. Uh, last time. Okay. 
Okay. That was your last slot for Orison? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you get 100 points for Orison. And Eredrin is a fail again. Alright. Um, so... Are you guys just uh, piling up the items now and cleansing them to be identified? Yeah. Yeah. So we can skip to 9.07 p.m. Eight hours forward. Okay. So 9 p.m. July... 24, 11, 85, minus 1, okay, fine. All right. Uh, it is 9.09 p.m. First up is Fenmar and Company. All the items are laid out in front of Anatar, so I'm just going to delete the stuff that's on the floor. Uh, we're uh, getting prepared for our rest, right? Yep. Uh, not yet. Anatar has to... Um, well, I guess one of the naps could go by if you want to have the second nap wait for Anatar. Sure. Or whichever an nap Anatar is on, or however you want to do it. I'll we'll just say it's in the second nap. There's Rim and both of them. But neither one's full. Okay. <clears throat> so whoever has participated in the first nap now has all of their spells back. Whoever's in the second nap is still waiting for Anatar to identify these items. Anything else for Fenmar and company? Uh, no. I'll be changing my spells up. Aaron Glor is going to change a spell. Okay, next up is Shandrak and company. Waiting for Anatar right. to... So he's about to finish, right? He is about to cast the Identify spell. He's okay. He's spent eight hours cleansing the items. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, oh. when he casts it, he will lose temporarily eight constitution. That will return to him one constitution per hour. So if he's so if he's finished cleansing it, so so wait, I'm just so can I cast identify or do I have to also cleanse it? Uh, yes, you also have to cleanse the items as well, okay. which you could have done while he was. Well, I didn't have the spell prepared, but I mean, if that's a thing I could do, then <laughs> yeah, I was I was planning on doing that. If that's allowed, then Karen Glor would uh, do that as well. Well, it, then does that mean you participated in the nap to prepare the spell? Well, definitely, yeah. I mean, then no, you cannot identify these items. Anatar was the only person who had identified, uh, cast, or uh, memorized once cleansing began. Right, so, so we just had to do it after this is done, though. That's, that's after right. he identifies, you can start cleansing the items for eight hours. Right, right. That's okay. That's the only thing I just wanted to clarify. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Chantrak's just uh, looking at his books and changing his spells. Got an Anatar looking at the items, and that's all. Okay. 
Um, Asher and company. And Tara is going to cast Identify. Okay, roll Identify. Or do I... Yeah, there's a I'm, button. I was just All right. my way through. And the first he one he's is going to... Mage 10. Yes. The Plasta... First one he's going to look at is the Daimyo Splint Male. Okay. You already know the power of the enchantment for this, because you used uh, Detect Magic. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you discover the, uh, the history of the item through identifying it. Um, it's the, uh, or sorry, not the history. It's, this is the Daimyo's, the Daimyo split mail. Okay. Uh, okay. This finely crafted, uh, it says plate mail, but this is splint mail. This finely crafted splint mail radiates a powerful aura of magic. When worn, the armor bestows a dignified and commanding aura upon its owner. The wearer is treated as if he had a charisma of 18 for all encounter reactions. Friendly troops within 360 feet of the user have their morale increased by plus two. Otherwise, the armor functions as splint mail plus one. Uh, since the effect uh, arises in great part from the distinctiveness of the armor, the wearer cannot hide or conceal himself in any way and still have the effect function. So if you cover it in a cloak, sure. it, it will not function. Um, but charisma of 18 for all encounter reactions is pretty good when you go into like a king's court or something. Um, and then uh, it's all friendly troops within 360 feet of the user have the morale increased by plus two. So that's, if even if they're not under your command, it says friendly troops. So um, anyone within 360 feet who has direct line of sight to the wearer, uh, so like all, all your henchmen and stuff, they get plus two to their morale score just for being within 360, like it's a, it's a banner or something almost. And then, um, for the wearer's henchmen, if if uh, if a uh, if the wearer has henchmen, um, it's you're treated as if you have, you know, 18 charisma. Obviously, so that plus two is in addition to any bonuses you get from having 18 charisma. It doesn't say that, but I'm sure that's what was intended, because it's. Charisma of 18 for all encounter reactions. So your loyalty base for Charisma 18 is really high. And then when, you know, you're within 360 feet of your henchmen, uh, they get plus two on top of that. I don't know what the loyalty base for uh, 18 Charisma is, but it's fucking good. It's got to be like plus seven or something. And then the magic of the armor gives you an additional plus two. Exactly what it is, plus seven. So, yeah, that's that's really good um, for a player character. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you put it onto a henchman, obviously the henchman is going to give all the other henchmen and people in the party... Uh, plus two to their morale, and then it functions as split mail plus one. So plus one to your saves and all that, and the item saves for the armor. And of course, uh, magic armor is weightless, whatnot. So 
but it's called Armor of Command. And that is Anatar's first charge on his uh, Identify spell. Before we move on to the second charge, real quick, let's take a three minute break and we'll come back to identifying these items. We'll be right back.
And we're back. All right. Um, so what was Anatar's next item? All right, so next he will do the Daimyo's Kote. Okay, so this one also is only going to take one charge. Uh, the Daimyo's Kote, uh, as you already know, are Kote plus five. And you get a little bit of the backstory of how, you know, they were, <clears throat> well, not the little bit, but the whole backstory of how they were created for him um you know probably by the shogun's wizards or whatever <clears throat> and gifted to him uh as protection so kote plus five that's a pretty pretty Weeds. good enchantment yeah all right uh so that was his second charge now what's the next item mm -hmm. let's do the daimyo's wakizashi all right. Uh, again, this one's only going to take one charge, and um, it is in fact an ancient, uh, you know, wakizashi that has been passed down from generation to generation in the Akuma um, family, and was um, at one time gifted to uh, the Akuma family by um, Ushis's avatar. Back in the day before the Akiuma family went sour. <laughs> Alright, so that's his third charge. It is definitely a Wakizashi plus five. Holy smokes. Yep. Randomly rolled. So. Uh, Alright, so let's move on to his fourth charge. What's the next item? I'm saving. I'm sorry. All right. We're saving. I'm typing as we go. Okay. All right. So next, let's do. I'm trying to get through the overwhelming stuff first. Now let's do the book. All right. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated. Here. The book is tend to be. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, this magical work bestows upon any character of any class the ability to use the spells within its pages. However, upon first reading the work, any character not already able to use spells, so a non-spellcaster, so a non-priest or a non-wizard, right? So any rogue or any warrior, suffers 5d4 points of damage and is stunned for 5d4 turns. It's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So it basically favors spellcasters because, you know, the rogue rolls up and is like, oh, I'm going to take this spell spell book or whatever. He picks it up, takes a bunch of damage, and then is stunned. And then the wizard and the priest come in and they're like, eh, I'll take it instead, you know. Or maybe they're scared by it and don't want to touch it. Hey. <clears throat> uh, thereafter, he can examine the writing without further harm. Uh, you're lucky you're a monk. The nature of each page is determined by die roll, and you make a percentile uh, roll and consult a table, which um, I'm not going to divulge. Um, and so that will take up the. Um, let's see, you did is the armor. Fourth, did, fourth item. Yeah, the armor, the kote, the wakizashi, so that's the fourth one. 
Okay, so that's four. Let's do right. the girl uh, next. Oh, you don't you don't want to know the rest of it? Oh, sorry, there's more. Yeah, let's keep going. Okay. Uh, so with the fifth charge, you learn um, if a spell is written on a page, uh, you can determine the spell level by rolling uh, a, you know, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's that's right. They uh, uh, counter what they say in the first paragraph. You're supposed to make a percentile roll, and if it's you know a certain number to a certain number, it's a blank page. Certain number to certain number, it's a pre-spell, and then certain number to certain number, it's a wizard spell. And then they go on saying, if a spell is written on a page, determine the spell level by rolling 1d10 for pre-spell and 1d12. Uh, wait, hold on. If the result is 8 to 10 for Priest or 10 to 12 for Wizard, make a second die roll, 1d6 for Priest, 1d8 for Wizard spells. Once the spell level is known, the DM can select particular spells. Like, what the fuck is that? It's a check for a... Ch for a <laughs> it's a second, second check for a um, spell level. Uh, we can skip that part. And then uh, it says, record page content secretly. Do not reveal this information to the holder of the book. But you're using a, a identify spell, so... Um, yeah, you, you, will not, you will not know future uh, pages, page, like spells, um, mm -hmm. further into the book unless you actually turn the page. Even with the identify spell, uh, I, can't, I can't tell you that. It would take a wish... Um, or a, uh, I want to say there's some kind of, like, uh, sorcerer's stone or something like that that you can use in conjunction with an identify spell that will tell you, like, how many charges are on a, um, like a rod or a wand or staff or whatever when you identify it. I think in that case, if you use that item in conjunction with the identify spell, I should probably, you know, tell you how many pages are in the book and which pages have, you know, what spells. Because you're supposed to know everything about whatever it is you identify with that. So using that item with identify or a wish spell will t will tell you the secrets of the book. Other than that, I'm not telling you. Um. <laughs> so okay. So this is still your four. Sorry, your fifth. What? Fourth. Fifth. It's my fifth. Still your fifth. Uh, once a page is turned, it can never be flipped back. Uh, paging through the Book of Infinite Spells is a one-way trip. When the last page is turned, the book vanishes. The owner of the book can cast the spell to which the book is opened once per day only. If the spell is one that the character would normally be able to cast by reason of class and level, however, the spell can be cast up to four times per day due to the book's magical powers. <laughs> Whoa! So, Tenzi, you could have had that, uh, what was it, that weird armor spell or whatever? I'm pretty sure you were able to cast that. Yeah. Uh, could have had it could for... Use, can only use it on myself, so... Yeah. yeah. But now I have free action, so that one I can cast, so I can do that four times a day. Yep. Uh, and uh, you have free action on yourself already because you're a uh, monk, so you can cast. You have to cast it on other people, pretty much. Uh, the only, or sorry, uh, yeah, still the fifth one. The owner of the book need not have the book on his person in order to use its power. The book can be cool. stored in a place of safety while the owner is adventuring, and still allow its owner to cast spells by means of its power. So it will flip its own pages without you even being there. Um, so still on the fifth one. Uh, each time a spell is cast, there is a chance that the energy connected with its use will cause the page to magically turn despite all precautions. So you could chain it down. Uh, yeah, it'll just flip, you know, 
magically uh, flip pages. Uh, the owner will know this and possibly even benefit from the turning by gaining access to a new spell. The chance of a page turning is as follows, and there's uh, percentile chances that the spellcaster employing the spells usable uh, by own class or level is um, the lowest. Okay, Spellcaster using spells foreign to own class or level uh, is a little higher. And then a non-spellcaster using a priest spell is a little higher than that. Non-spellcaster using a wizard spell is a little higher than that. Um, so it's a uh, pretty decent chance that none of those things happens. Other than when you're a non-spellcaster, then it kind of becomes a, a better chance. Um, and then... Uh, Treat each spell as if a scroll were being employed, including time of casting, uh, spell failure, etc. So, you know, spell failure is like if you're, if it if it turns to a resurrection spell, but you're like a 14th or a 13th level priest, then you're off by one level, and there's like a 5% chance that it might fail. And I think if you roll double zero. Um, the opposite happens. So, like, if you're trying to resurrect somebody, you might end up killing yourself or something like that. Or use it, what's the, the resurrection reverse spell on yourself? It takes away all but one HP or something like that. Something weird. Okay, so that was, uh, that one took two charges. Uh, so that was five charges out of the ten. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the, book what's, the book is finished. Okay. To the girdle. So it is a book of infinite spells. Of infinite spells. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next one. That's so we're on the sixth charge now for the girdle. So it's a girdle of giant strength, and you guys all know from the first girdle of giant strength that uh, you have to roll randomly for what type of giant it was. Uh, and I just so happened to roll a 96. So it is a storm oh, giant shit. girdle. Strength <laughs> 24. <laughs> That's the that. like one of the best magic items in the game, right? Especially for warriors that have multiple attacks. Because you really start shitting out damage. Um, give me That's one... Like plus... That's like plus six or seven strength, isn't it? Uh, no, no. 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 20, 20, 24 it takes strength? you. It takes you straight to twenty-four strength, no matter what your strength is. And, that, cool. and that's plus fourteen damage and seven to hit. Yeah, something like oh, that. God. Oh my god. Yeah, that's like one of the best for mar for any melee class. That's like one of the best magical items you can get. Yeah, yeah. Um, mostly. Mostly for warriors because they have multiple attacks, so you end up photocopying the strength damage when you're using oh, weapons, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, any any class can use it technically. It's you're it's not just for for warriors or or thieves or priests. Um, but uh, yeah, most efficiently for for warriors, and then um, you know thieves will have. A nice time with their backstabs with <laughs> 24 strength, 24 strength, obviously. <laughs> and then uh, priests, you know, e eventually, if you find that, because uh, most most um, warriors aren't gonna be proficient with hammers or whatever, a priest has a pretty pretty decent chance of, you know, being proficient with with hammers. But there's always the Gauntlets of Ogre Power stacked with the, you know, the perfect Storm Giant uh, girdle and the Hammer of Thunderbolts or whatever. There's a chance, you know, of rolling Hammer of Thunderbolts. Gauntlets of Ogre Power are a little bit more common than the Hammer of Thunderbolts. They give 19. 
Uh, Gauntlets of Ogre Power give 18 double zero, and all the bonuses stack with magic girdles. So 18 double zero is uh, plus three to hit and plus six to damage, right? And then uh, if the giant strength girdle is plus seven, plus 14, it bumps up to plus 10, plus 20. What? Yeah. And then the hammer of thunderbolts is like a hammer plus five or something, which is plus five, plus five. And that's, you know, magic. So it's stacks with anything, including strength. So the, the bonuses go up to plus 15, plus 25. The and then, yeah. Armor should go to the bard. As much as I would really like to use it. That, that Daimyo's armor. Uh, the bard Ryder, has plus yeah, 5 chainmail. Yeah, he's got... So he good. might not want it. Yeah, he might not want it. Okay, okay. Yeah. I would say to use it as... Because you said it's armor of command, right? Yeah. Yeah. Out of the book. Right. It would have to... A bard would be able to use uh, a command spell once a day. Yeah. Um... I don't think bards can wear anything higher than chain. Uh, so I don't think the bard oh, can so even wear that. Wear split now. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, it, I remember it saying that. Yeah, okay. they can't wear anything higher than chain, and they can't use shields. So, I I figured that was going to be some kind of giant strength gauntlet or uh 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 belt, but yeah, girdle. Yeah, that's insane. Yep. You've randomly rolled that out. That's insane. No, no, that w the belt itself was a gift. Uh, from the from the viewers, somebody spent, you know, like twelve thousand channel points or something to add it and to, that in there. Okay. and then still and the then the table. and then I still had to randomly roll which girdle it was, and it came up storm giant. So, yeah, bananas. Yeah, uh, and then Tenzi has the first one, which was what stone giant strength. But yeah, I feel like it was Hill Giant. Okay. All right, so that was, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. That was six charges. What's the next one after the girdle? Is it rain? Uh, sure. Uh, well, we. That's fine. Uh, we can do the ring. Ring of warmth. Okay. Yep, you oh, do know. Yeah, that wasn't anything you, you do know that it's a ring of warmth. All right, so this is your seventh charge, out of the ten. Uh, this ring provides its wearer with body heat, even in conditions of extreme cold, where the wearer has no clothing whatsoever. It also restores damage caused by cold. At a rate of one point per turn, so it gets it gives you cold damage regeneration, right? Uh, it provides a saving throw bonus of plus two versus cold based attacks, and it reduces damage sustained by minus one per die. It's like the ultimate cold defense in one the game. One point per turn or one point per round? Per turn, so ten you, minutes every ten minutes. That's not very good. Well, I mean, usually ice damage. Uh, minus one damage per per die of the spell or attack or whatever it is, and if yeah, there's if there's a saving throw, you get a plus two. Uh, to the save. Cold. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Anything that gives you any kind of regeneration is good. Um, it's just taking cold damage is kind of few and far between uh because number one there aren't very many spell casters number two there aren't very many ice spells and number three most of the time cold spells do not very much damage 
Anyways. So, there's that. But, we are uh, heading north eventually, so. Yeah. Alright, so that was number seven. Let's do the rod next. The rod. Yeah. Okay, this is number eight. Uh, the... Yeah, this one is worth one charge for the whole thing. Uh, this rod enables a cleric to resurrect the dead, even elven, dwarven, gnome, or halfling, as if he were of high enough level to cast the resurrection spell. No rest is required, as the rod bestows the life-giving effects. The rod can be used but once per day. Okay, so if you use it in any 24-hour period... As soon as midnight rolls around, you can use it again. Okay. The number of charges used to resurrect a character depends on class and race. Total the number of charges indicated for the character's class and race. Okay, so cleric is one charge, druid two charges, fighter two charges, paladin one charge, ranger two charges, mage and illusionist are, and thief are three charges, and then bard is two charges. And then the races are Dwarf, three charges, Elf, four charges, Gnome, three charges, Half-Elf, two charges, Halfling, two charges, Human, one charge, and any... I'm, I'm going to expand this to any player character race, but any one, any race that's not listed is going to take uh, as many as an Elf, which is four charges. Okay, so maximum... Maximum amount for any other player character race. So that includes your gold dragon. That includes your uh, Tulani Eldrin. Uh, includes your uh, Movanic Deva. Okay. Four. Uh, four charges. So you you add the race and class together. So if it is a, for example, if Cotterbill died. He's, uh... Is he fighter and thief? Yes. Okay, so the highest between fighter and thief is thief, which is three. And then he's a halfling, which is two. So it takes three plus two equals five charges. Five charges. Gotcha. And then... How many charges? You, you, there's no way of knowing unless you use a, uh... I think it's called the Sage's Stone and the Identify spell. And uh, when you use it, it consumes the Sage's Stone. But at least you know how many charges there are. So usually what you want to do is, um, you know, you use the rod and then somehow try to recharge it or pay to recharge it. But, you know, how often do you have to use the Resurrection spell? Not very often. <laughs> Ideally. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that was number eight. Mm -hmm. What's the next, next item? Let's do... The... Uh, potion with the... Overwhelming Charm Magic, the second potion from the chest. The second potion? Overwhelming Charm Magic, okay, yeah. There it is. 
All right, so this is your ninth charge, right? All right, <clears throat> a full potion of this draught must be consumed for its effect to be felt. Uh, it will influence one or two giants like a charm monster spell. Control lasts for 5d6 rounds. If only one giant is influenced, it is entitled to a saving throw versus spell with a minus 4 penalty. If two are influenced, the die roll gains a plus 2 bonus. Uh, you're weakening the effect of the potion by charming two. Uh, the type of giant to a particular potion is randomly determined. And this is... Da, 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 da. What goes with the belt? Hey! <laughs> no way. Storm giant control. Oh my god! <laughs> That's good to have in your pocket. When were to ever encounter a storm giant? I think have more than you would think. Have once. But we have in one or two one shots as oh, well. Oh 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 wait 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 wait. Oh you know what? I'm sorry. The girdle the girdle of giant strength was frost giant strength, not not storm giant. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Fuck. Uh, I Frost Giant. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah, Frost Giant. I don't yeah, I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, Frost. Be great for somebody who has multiple hits. Yeah. Um. Fortunately, most of the people in the party that have multiple hits are already. Uh, really strong, so I mean, it's all up to you. Uh, let's see, Frost Giants have a uh, plus nine to their damage. Um, and you can still like lift up a gate in a castle or something like that. I mean, you're stupid yeah, strong. Yeah. Yep. Table strength. Yeah, frost frost giants are twenty one strength. And Tenzi has the hill giant one, which is nineteen. So sorry about that. I, I got the potion mixed up with the the girdle. Fuck. What happens? Alright. That's uh, fine. That's still awesome. Yeah. Still, still still awesome. That's still that's still uh plus four to hit and plus nine to damage. So everybody lived, and if we hadn't we could have <laughs> used the rod of regeneration, so it would have been fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so th Yeah, that was your ninth. How many to hit? So plus nine to damage and how many to hit? Uh for frost giant? It's a uh, 21 strength, which is plus four to hit, plus nine to damage. Four to hit. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, your open doors is 17 out of 20, and your open magically sealed doors is 12 out of 20, and you have a 70% Ben Bar's lift gates, which that's pretty fucking awesome. Huh. It's like you're doing siege damage then. Next, let's do the other potion from the chest, the one with moderate elemental fire magic. And this All should right. be my last charge. Yep, that is your tenth charge. And it is uh, yet another potion of fire breath. All right. So, um, for anyone who doesn't know what a potion of fire breath does, um, it lets you... If you drink the whole thing, uh, you basically get like a dragon's breath, fire, let's see... Potion of Fire Breath. Uh, the Tongue of Flame from this potion can damage wooden constructions and inflicts 1d2 points of structural damage for each die of damage it normally inflicts. For example, a single draught inflicts 1d2 points of structural damage. Uh, it also can set wood constructions on fire. And... Let's 
so that was out of combat and tactics. Uh, I'm guessing it's fire dash breath. For the DMG one? Okay. Uh, this potion allows the imbiber to spew a tongue of flame anytime within one hour of quaffing the liquid. Each potion contains enough liquid for four small draughts. Uh, one draught allows the imbiber to uh, breathe a cone of fire 10 feet wide and up to 20 feet long and inflicts 1d10 plus 2 points of damage. A double draught doubles the range in damage, so uh, 2d10 plus 4. Uh, the entire, if the entire potion is taken at once, the cone is 20 feet wide up to 80 feet long and inflicts 5d10 points of damage. 5d10? Yeah, 5d10. Uh, saving, th saving throws versus breath weapon for half damage apply in all cases. If the flame is not expelled before the hour expires, the potion fails, with a 10% chance that the flames erupt in the imbiber's system, inflicting double damage upon him with no saving throw allowed. And I've actually had a character die of that before. Oh, the, no. player, the player drank the uh, potion without identifying it. Um, and, uh, didn't know how to, like, expel it, despite my descriptions, and the guy died, basically, um, what's that called when you in inhale your own vomit, um, uh, aspirating, yeah. yeah, so he basically aspirated on, like, lava, pretty much. Oh God! Yeah, and I was gonna say spontaneously combust, but that's worse. <laughs> yeah, because it's uh, t what ten d ten points of damage, and the guy the guy died. Shit. Yep. <laughs> all right. Um. So that's that's all your charges. And thank you. All right. So that leaves just four things that we were not able to identify, and I put them blue guys on the treasure so that we'll be able to remember what we didn't get to. Yeah. The Nodachi, uh, the splint mail from the chest, the bullets from the chest, and the Kote from the chest. Hmm? Uh, is anyone going to claim any of these items right now? The Musashi like got the Wakazashi. Okay. Uh, Shandrak would like to claim the Girdle of Giant Strength himself, too. I uh, would like it. one of the sets of armor. I would definitely take the plus five Kote. Izzy, are you able to wear Kote or no armor at all? Musashi. I don't know. Musashi can. He's wearing the splinter. Oh, okay. Oh, he already has Kote, okay. Yeah, not and no, I know, I know that your uh, situation is kind of weird, so I just want to make sure. Monks cannot wear any, I think a cloak, they can wear an armor cloak, and I think rings, yeah. and like armor bracers, but I think that's it. They remove the ability to wear bracers. Oh, and they get... Their AC goes up naturally over time as they level, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to keep that book? Um, I guess I will. Um, okay. Spell now, but... Who who took the Wakizashi? Musashi has it. Okay, so the, the Wakizashi plus five is worth 3,000 points. Uh, did, uh, Tenzi take the book? We were just kind of talking about it. I guess I will. Okay. okay I did, tr I did try opening it, so I put, put some risk into it. Yes. It's true. But for now, at least. <laughs> uh, you get 9,000 points. Whew. Okay. Uh...
Let's see. Some somebody said the uh, girdle. Have to take that. Oh, uh, so apparently wizards can't use the girdle of giant strength, but priests, rogues, and warriors can. Uh, you're part rogue, so you can use it. Um, and you earn uh, 2,000 points. All right. Uh, ice, frost giant, frost giant strength, yeah. Okay, and then um, yeah. what else Ooh. got claimed? Uh, rod. Oh yeah, you claim the rod. And the, that are any set of armor, but if that stuff would be a huge bonus for uh, right. AC for me. So your rod of resurrection gives you ten thousand experience points. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what else was claimed? You you claim um, the armor if unless somebody you guys think somebody else would benefit from it. Was that the armor of command? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, that one is worth one thousand experience points. And did you also take the the Cote plus five? Who took the Cote plus five? I had them, me. Unless somebody else can use them. We do have another set that still needs identified. The best stuff should go to the players. So. I agree. Uh, okay. Uh, so Cote... The Cote plus five are worth 3,000 points. Did the right. magic bullets have an XP value? Yeah. So it's, it's three between two characters, three characters. Oh, okay. Um, they're not. Yeah, they're not. Oh, and if they're... you split it up, then there's no bonus too. Anything else? Who did anyone want to claim anything mm -hmm. else? Still the ring of warmth and the two potions. Um If no one claims them we can do it later. Uh, if nobody wants the potions, I'll take them. Okay. Yeah. Uh fire breath potion is four hundred. And the giant control, storm giant control is 600. Thank you. I, I hope you get to use that. <laughs> <coughs> so Would somebody really cool. Somebody claimed the rod, the book, and the girdle. So those are the three main ones. Mm. It rings that she wears. She's wearing a lot of rings. <laughs> That's true. That's fine. Yeah, I'll take it. Thank you. Asher's a ring collector. Yeah. <laughs> Does she have more than two? Um. Yeah, so like there's a, like a signet ring and a pin ring and like, oh okay they're, well, they're like these yeah. rings and and her magic one okay <laughs> yeah I meant magic okay just one magic all right um is there is did anyone claim the ring who claimed the ring take it if you don't mind who uh, sure okay uh, the ring. Of warmth. 
uh, is 1,000 points. Okay, so I and no one's claiming anything else yet, right? That's correct. All right. So we'll end our session there, and I know at least someone, at least a PC gained a level, right? Fenmar, did you gain a level? I'm looking at you, Fenmar. Um. Uh, yes, just barely. That one of the magical items put me over. Okay like 24 experience points over nice so you're level seven now yes sir okay level seven priests uh you can cast fourth level spells now so you got one fourth level slot downtime I could level up <laughs> gotta save the world <laughs> and that's pretty much all you get is a fourth level slot at level yep. seven <clears throat> and of course you got your non one maximum HP Gendrak is very close. If he took that, if he took that book, he would have leveled up. <laughs> yeah. But I'm happy with what I got. All right. Our viewers are still with us. Thank you so much for your generosity. It was very yeah. cool. Yeah. So what what all the items were from the um, people? All right. So. Uh All right. <clears throat> uh so the girdle of frost right strength uh was from Watch Your Pants. So thank you very much Watch Your Pants <clears throat> for that girdle you. of thank you. Frost Giant strength. The ring of warmth was from Excel 809. Thank you very much Excel. So. Excel. Uh, the Book of Infinite Spells was from Thaco Tuesday. Thank you very much, Thaco Tuesday. Right. Thank you. Thaco, that was very cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then pretty much the Fiesta Resistance for 10,000 experience points. And you guys don't really have to worry about dying uh, unless it gets broken or something, heaven forbid. Watch your pants with a second item. The Rod of Resurrection. Thank you very much. Woo! Watch your, you pants. your pants. So as long as you don't have a TPK and your priest doesn't Thank die, because that's a priest-only magical item. Any priest can use it, so you have two PC priests, luckily. And then you also have one NPC priest, right, uh, Jim? So any... A Varen's a warrior, right. technically, so That's he right. cannot. That's right. He just oh. he, he yeah. just cast priest spells. So, right. um, yep, if so just one NPC priest. Yeah, if one or more of those priests dies, the remaining one can pick up the rod of resurrection and use it to resurrect the other priests and the rest of the party. Um, which so uh. Fenmar, what's your armor class? Now that uh, you have... I put that armor on, I'm at negative six now. Holy smoke! Holy shit! <laughs> Alright. Uh, be because you have... Uh, shield style? You have shield style. Yeah, with my shield. shield Shieldless, I would be... Shield um, deficiency. <clears throat> shieldless, I would be... Okay. So, the thing... Zero, I think. So the thing about Kote is they count as a buckler for determining the um, armor class bonus. Okay, so the armor from from uh, shield proficiency. 
Shield okay. medium plus three AC. So shield proficiency is all. It's all one. It's all one proficiency. So you don't have to put weapon proficiency shield medium plus three AC. You just put. Oh, I see. That's notes. Okay. Um. I'll just put shield prof period. So you can still see the medium plus three AC. So they count as bucklers. <clears throat> all right. So bucklers are a little different than your medium shield. Your medium shield you can no longer use, obviously, because it would get in the way of your cote. Um, and uh, bucklers, you're able to use one buckler for to block one attack per round. So you technically have two, right? Because there's two cote. So you can use it against two attacks per round. You only get, from shield proficiency, you only get plus one bonus AC. So, okay, so I'm, I'm at... A one Kote is worth essentially nine... Uh, sorry, so seven seven AC points. Split mail gets me to four. It's split mail plus one, so that's three. Plus the Kote, which is... Five. Five, six, That's... seven each. Because the Kote itself is one. Then from proficiency is two. And then plus five is seven. Seven. I think the, That's I think the shield proficiency requires you to say what shield you're proficient in. No. No, I don't think it does. Uh I thought there was a bonus. You can be shield proficient or proficient in a specific one. I don't think it works like that either. I think it's just general shield proficiency. Uh, we'll look it up. Combat and tactics. Uh, weapon Combat specialization. Uh, weapon proficiencies. Shield proficiency. By spending a weapon proficiency, characters can become more skilled in the use of their shield. Modern reenactments of medieval tournaments have demonstrated that the shield is a very important part of a warrior's protection. The extra protection conferred by the shield varies by that exact type the character becomes proficient in. Ah, yes, it is true, Tenzi. Okay, so you are proficient with the medium shield, so you, you can't use it with your Kote. However, your Kote are still worth 6 AC points. So... Without it, I would be uh, negative 3. Found a pickable weapon slot, essentially. Yes, and then... And uh, I, have, I have a weapon slot, so I can do that if I need to. Yeah. And... Your Dexterity... Defense I adjustment... I don't get a bonus. Has no bonus. So your AC shield list becomes three. Still, negative three is pretty good. Uh, but you can only use your Kote against two attacks per round. And they have to be in the three squares in front of you. It can't be flanks. Uh, because bucklers cannot be used against flank attacks. Medium shields uh, are the three squares in front of you and the flank that the medium shield is on. And then large shields are three squares in front of you and both flanks. Because the shield is so fucking big. <clears throat> okay. Um, any, any questions about anything, questions, comments, concerns, any feedback? So with that, oh, with that girdle of giant strength, um, does that, does those bonus I get, does that stack with my soul, magic sword bonus? Uh, yeah, but you don't put it on the character sheet. You just check the box for strength and damage and you literally change your strength to 21. Okay, yeah. I'm just wondering. It's like, okay, because it's a plus four to hit with the girdle, and I got a, a magic sword plus four, so I got a yep. plus eight to hit. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, yep, yep, but yep. you only put <laughs> plus four, plus four, because yeah, for sure. that column is for skill and magic, and then it's your your strength is the check boxes. That would be some good backstab. So don't double down on the bonuses. It should only say plus four, plus four. Yeah, yeah, I didn't change that. I just changed okay. the strength. Yeah, and then make sure all your boxes are checked. Um for weapon damage so you want damage and uh oh shit hang on a second be right back i have 18 charisma now i can basically charm you guys hey man i'm pretty charismatic myself <laughs> <laughs> and i have the friend spell <laughs> What fourth level spells should I get? These are starting to get some probably cure serious. Yeah, I'm just trying to think now. Now that I got that that uh, girdle, I might change my gear around so I can um actually carry my okay. spell books around. <laughs> All right. Um, any any questions? I do have a question. Go ahead. In the, in the event of a potential EPK, how much of the remains do you need in order to resurrect someone at a different uh, location? Well, you have to read the resurrection spell. So. Okay. Check it out. Let's uh, see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you need the body, and it needs to be whole. <laughs> Um, yeah, if there's, the if there's a limb spell. severed, they come back with the limb severed, like it's not healed, like it would yeah. be healed, but there's so you'd want to fix that beforehand. Yeah. There's any pieces, uh, that <laughs> might be raised dead. Let's see, fine resurrection, yeah, resurrection is a lot more lenient. Yeah, the body can be dead for 10 years. Hmm. Well, that's that's true. Uh, it. A lot it's more than based that. On it's the like two hundred, a nineteen two hundred, hundred and ninety years. Yeah. You can, oh, it can use the bones of a creature dead up to hundred ninety years. Okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah, if it's down to the bones, that's pretty good. <laughs> Unless they Unless you're died of natural causes. Yeah, the priest is able to restore to life and complete strength to any living creature, including elves. By bestowing the resurrection spell, creature can have been dead up to 10 years per level of the priest casting the spell. Thus, a 19th level priest can resurrect the bones of a creature dead up to 190 years. Uh, the So if you are level 30, that's uh, 300 years. Because technically this is a tier 3 spell. So up to up to 300 years, uh, the creature, upon surviving a resurrection survival check, is immediately restored to full hit points and can perform strenuous activity. The spell cannot bring back a creature that has reached its allotted lifespan, i.e., died of natural causes. Casting this spell makes it impossible for the priest to cast further spells or engage in combat until he has one day of bed rest for each experience level or hit die. The creature is brought back to life. Uh, the caster ages three years upon casting this spell. And First, yeah, all you have to, all you have to have is the bones <laughs> of a creature. So the complete skeleton is fine. So if they die in a fire or something, you just scoop up their skeleton in a bag, or their ashes in a bag or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns? Okie doke. Um, I had fun this session. You guys got uh, plenty of experience despite not having any combat, which I particularly like. <clears throat> um, like when there's role-playing stuff and uh, uh, bonuses from, from items. All right. Um, so for our viewers, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you like who we are and like what we do, I strongly urge you to explore our uh, links below. Um, 
We have links to Patreon and PayPal if you'd like to support us um, in any way, shape, or form. That's a good avenue to do it. You can also, uh, uh, you know, grant us bits in uh, Twitch uh, live when we uh, broadcast. Um, and there's also uh, subscriptions help us out as well, um, especially uh, for the channel subscriptions help out uh, we do have a subscription goal right now currently it's uh, 15 subscriptions and it's gonna open up a new um, slot for an animated like uh, emote uh, for the channel and I was going to put in a critical hit emote um, currently we have a little dancing poop little jumping poop uh, for when people roll uh, crit fails or uh, Fouls uh, when they when they roll natural once, <clears throat> um, so uh, those uh, subscriptions really help. And I uh, just want to say thank you again uh, for watching. Um, please stick around for the raid. We're gonna raid uh, Lord Gosumba. As always, we'll see you next time and have a great one. Slash raid Lord. Go Samba. All right, here we go in Tizzy. Yeah, have a good evening. Have a great one. And See thank you, you viewers, for the good gifts again. It's so for much. sure. Thanks, everybody. All right, bye bye. And.